come inside, come inside. in the other seventh car, the other in-deck Forsyth car, in the second row with Sebastian Bourdais, Justin Wilson and Timo Glock in the third row, Alex Tagliani, Cristiano Damata in row four, Ronnie Bremer and A.J. Allmendinger in row number five, Vassar and Ryan hunter Ray in the sixth row, Bjorn Bernheim and Oriol Servi in the seventh row, Nelson Philippe and Andrew Ranger, Marcus Marshall and Ricardo Spirafico, and shotgun on the field, as we mentioned, Fabrizio Del Monte. We are glad to have you with us, ready to go racing on the streets of Long Beach, the 31st Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach, and we are about to get the first green, green of the 2005 green, green. season. Paul Tracy in the lead. Look at Dominguez, his teammate down the inside, inside, Joe Carey, they go side by side. Everybody through turn one cleanly. That was a big concern. You're riding with Sebastian Bourdais. Right behind Justin Wilson. They also went side by side around that first corner. This is the difficulty on the cold tires to be aggressive, but don't make that key mistake. Tracy is the leader. Junquera second, six car lengths back. Dominguez is third. Fourth spot right now belongs to the car of Justin Wilson. So he got the drop on Bourdais off the drop of the green flag. You saw Glock right behind. Uh, Justin Wilson also ahead of Bourdais. Uh, behind Bourdais. There they are right there. There's Bourdais. There's Glock right behind them. Hard breaks on very, very bumpy. You turn right. But here's probably the most difficult complex. It's a long, long left-hander. Tracy has just gone through. He's on the red. See the red tire marks on the side. The softer of the tires. Tracy with a substantial lead coming down to put lap number one of 81 on the board in front of a huge crowd. More than 100,000 fans have gathered here by the shores of Long Beach. Second is Junkera, Dominguez, Wilson, Bourdais, and Timo Glock right in there at six. Oh, look at the break zone. Break zone down here. Bourdais down inside Wilson. They trying to take the spot away. Tagliani making a move up. Tag, I believe, got inside Timo Glock. He did. A great, a great move also. Tagliani gains a spot. Bourdais has picked up a spot. He is now fourth. Tagliani sixth. Up in front, it's still Tracy and Junquera. And you knew Bourdais wouldn't be content to sit back there for long. And Bourdais was a little disappointed in his qualifying pace. He said he got good laps, got good runs. They just didn't have the pace to match a Paul Tracy. But he, in this very early lap, only on lap two, looks like he has an aggressive look on his face. There he is, right there, ahead of Wilson. Timo Glock trying to size up Alex Tagliani. Dominguez peels up. Third day now has a huge advantage. And one of the advantages Newman High showed us wide last wide year, superior fuel economy in many right cases. Dominguez in, Calvin. We expect oh, no perfect. chassis okay. adjustment the here. Will be standard tires. That's the norm. They're going to go to standards for the middle, and then they'll go to the rest for the final step. Slight front wing change. Bit more front wing. Half a turn of wing. Waiting on fuel. Dominguez away. Very impressive indeed. This man never met his team till Thursday. What a performance! Qualifying third and running at the front of the pack, Rick. Sebastian Bourdais takes over the point in the McDonald's number one series champion in 2004. Seven wins in 14 starts. Still on the Bridgestone Red Potenzas, Derek Daly. He's getting great mileage, and his tires haven't given up as much yet. Okay, this is oh, one car good around. Win. One car around at the head of the backstretch. It might have been Del Monte in that 41 again, and it is. Second time today that the new Jensen Motorsport entry, the Konica Minolta 41, has gone around, and we'll have at least a local yellow. Tony Kaufman did tell us he was going to try and clean up as many as he could under local yellow. 
So he's got to get him turned around and get it fired, or he's going to be forced to go full course yellow as Bourdais comes in. Race leader headed to pit road, coming your way on Bikas. Good job here, guys. Now, of course, the question is, did he get in before the pits were closed? That is obviously going to be ultra important for a day. close the pits. The crew is celebrating. That's what they wanted. They caught it exactly right, Jan, because they just threw the full course yellow, just as we learned from the new director of operations for Champ Car, Tony Cotman. They had a local yellow out there. They've just got full course. Oh, there's the lead. Tracy just manages to catch the lead. Bourdais almost pulled it off. He stayed out a long time, ran along with the Tracy on a light fuel load. The question was, could he make the move and get the, to get the uh, track position? We just caught a great picture there of Tracy just managing to hang on to the lead. And as a matter of fact, we're going green. Thank you, Al. Back to racing. Jimmy Vassar is the restart leader because he stopped early. Derek didn't have to stop on this cycle. He's in front of Tracy Bourdais and Andrew Ranger, but here comes Tracy. Oh, Tracy on the isn't. Now, what's going to be interesting here is... Bourdais is on another set of reds. He is on the softer tires. Tracy is not. So if Bourdais is able to use those tires that efficiently, he could use this extra grip to really hound our leader, Paul Tracy. Running order top left of your screen as Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series, powered by Ford. Riding with Sebastian Bourdais. Second spot, he nips by Jimmy Vassar, who has to settle into third in the PKB Gulfstream roll. And it just shows you the total Vassar's in. He's light on fuel compared to Bourdais and Tracy, and yet he is no match even in the break zones. But now, Bourdais has cleared Vassar. He is on the faster Bridgestone Reds. He's going to run down Paul Tracy. This could be good. Tracy Bourdais, Andrew Ranger next in line as we take a look at the 2004 Series Champion chasing the 03 title holder, Tracy. Tracy trying for the hat trick here in the streets of Long Beach. He's won the last two of these races. Uh, he is spectacular here. And he's also the type of driver that Bourdais knows if you're going to try and make a move on Tracy, you better make it decisive. It's a bit like the old Mario and Reddy days. If you wanted to make a move on Mario, he would chop your nose off if you <laughs> didn't absolutely take the position away from him. Spirafico offline down into turn one, gives ground, slower car as we ride with Sebastian Bourdais. 13th spot belongs to Bjorn Verdheim in the HVM number four. Very impressive all weekend, but has not raced very well here today. Marcus Marshall is 14th, Green Jimmy Vassar is 15th, and we're back underway. John Kerr, you see John Kerr right behind Paul Tracy. Here he comes. Here he goes to the outside. Tracy makes it work hard, though. Comes down the inside. Not a block move, a defensive move. Didn't change his line. Made it difficult for Junquera. Paul Tracy knew exactly what Junquera was going to try and do there. So now Bourdais gets his elbows up and hopes to build that lead once again. He's already opened up a couple more car lengths on Tracy. Yes, he has. Softer tires make that a bit easier. you got to be mistake-free here. Dominguez doing a great job. Wilson still hanging on very well. Hasn't been a threat, but just been quick enough to hang on. Calvin? Checked in with Neil McElroy. He said we are very concerned about the pace of Bourdais with those red tires. This yellow has really helped us out enormously in cut that gap way back. So right now they're saying Tracy just needs to try and keep inside of him, and we'll have the advantage for that final stint. Reason the yellow helps is Bourdais was running away. Yellow comes out, they all close up. The worst thing that could happen to Bourdais right now is he's going to try and stretch his legs as another yellow comes out and wipes out a potential lead that he has built up. A.J. Allmendinger has moved the Roos Ford car, the number 10, up into the top 10, up into ninth spot. He was the Rush Friends Rookie of the Year in 2004, bright young American hope, racing now out of Denver, Colorado. Terrific young man, former Toyota Atlantic and Barber Dodge Pro Champion. Coming to the white flag, one lap to go for the 2004 Series Champion. There's second place Tracy. There is Junquera Wilson. So in the break zone of her, Wilson has looked very good over the last three to five laps. Can he close up here? Battling for third, here's Wilson. He's moved the Sandisk number nine to fourth spot. But he's still about five car lengths behind Bruno Junquera. Realistically, the back straight is the opportunity, probably the only one left. 
but he's got to be quick through here on the next left and right handers. Ah, uh, he's, he's not close enough. He is not close enough. You've got to be able to get off the corner better than the guy in front of you to make a move, especially on a slick, slick street course like this. And on the last lap, Wilson again was the fastest car on the racetrack, even faster than Bourdais and Tracy. To the back straightaway, final time around the streets of Long Beach. Sebastian Bourdais, seven wins in 2004 on his way to his first Champ Guard Championship. Bourdais about to open 2005 with the drive from outside row two. Started fourth this afternoon. Coming to the stripe, J.D. Wilbur waves the checkered flag over Sebastian Bourdais, the winner of the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Paul Tracy checkers in second spot. That we don't need that when we get to Monterey. Bruno Giancara gets third. Justin Wilson comes home fourth. Mario Dominguez fifth. Rookies Timo Glock and Ronnie Bremer finish sixth and seventh. There's Tracy alongside Bourdais. They congratulate each other. A.J. Allmendinger comes home in eighth spot for Roosport. Jimmy Vassar is ninth. Cristiano D'Amata tenth. Oriol Servia, Bjorn Verheim. Ryan hunter Ray, Alex Tagliani, Marcus Marshall, yeah. Del Monte, Ranger, Philippe Fitzgerald. South of the border, the pace is easy unless you're pushing 800 horsepower. Let's play. Cristiano D'Amata has won twice in Monterey. The second time surviving a race weekend that took no prisoners. Paul Tracy made it to victory lane in 2003. And last season, Sebastian Bourdais became a winner in Old Mexico 2. Champ Car is back in Monterey for the fifth time, and today it's anyone's race. Welcome to Monterey, Mexico for round two of Bridgestone Presents the Champ Car World Series, powered by Ford. I'm Jeremy Shaw. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Pole position for today's Ticati Telmex Monterey Grand Prix. His 14th pole of his career, the Bridgestone Pole Award winner, Sebastian Bourdais. His third pole in a row here in Monterey. Alongside him on the front row, Justin Wilson. Row two of the grid, Paul Tracy. He won here in 2003. Alongside him, Alex Tagliani. Started and finished three times in the top five. Bruno Junquiera had a boost problem in qualifying. Came back to take the fifth position ahead of Mario Dominguez. Row four of the grid, Oriol Serbia again doing a great job for Dale Coyne Racing. Alongside him is Jimmy Vassar, the former series champion. Another former series champion, Cristiano Damada, the PKB teammate to Vassar. Row six of the grid, AJ Allmendinger, alongside of another young rookie driver from Germany, Timo Glock. Row seven, the two MyJack Conquest Racing teammates, Nelson Philippe and Andrew Ranger, both of them a mere 18 years old. Row eight of the grid, Bjorn Verheim, another former Formula 3000 champion, alongside him, Ricardo Sperafico from Brazil. Ryan hunter Ray will start in the 17th position alongside a rookie driver, Jorge Getted, alone at the back of the grid, Marcus Marshall from Team Australia. Coming up for the green flag, the flag is out, there is the green flag, J.D. Wilbur waves the green, and a great start there from farther back down the field, A.J. Arminiger trying to make up a couple of positions, but a good clean start there for Sebastian Bourdais, Ooh, some jockeying around at the back there, and Timo Glock trying to make up some positions, and some around the outside there, he's, uh, I think he's uh, got held up there at the beginning somehow, but I'm quite sure what happened to Timo Glock, he certainly appeared to lose a couple of positions, not the case for Sebastian Bourdais, there's the turn three and four, there is... Uh, well, I think that was Nelson Philippe there. I'm sure it was Nelson Philippe jumping over those curbs. Easy to do some damage to the car there, Mario Arbuthon. Yeah, I think that curve is terrible. As you said before, Tracy lost an engine there on qualifying on Friday. But the problem we have now, Bourdais uh, made it to the first corner and it's going to be hard to catch him. I mean, uh, unless there's some yellows and things, he's, he's just going to go away. He's just uh, a lot ahead of the field, field here. But, Coming back to what we were saying, I think Chen Car does a great job in promoting overtaking and the push to pass, which all of them were using in the, in, at the start. Yeah. Now, Paul Tracy has got ahead there of Justin Wilson for second place, so a great start for PT. Has he got anything for Bourdais? 
we shall see over the next few laps, but uh, a very good start uh, by Paul Tracy. Track position here is, well, is important everywhere. Look at a huge crowd here. Here we go, back to green. Paul Tracy gets the hammer down. Can he make the move around Bjorn Verdam? No, but yes! Bjorn Verdam just saw, saw Tracy, was right behind him, tried to carry a little bit too much speed into turn one and paid the price on the exit. Paul Tracy, great piece of driving. Yeah, and that's very good for Paul because uh, Wertheim stayed there and now he, he's holding out for a day and Bruno behind him and uh, Tracy has a chance to get away. Once again, no blocking. You see, Bjorn Verdam's really struggling now. I think uh, he's, that car is really sliding around. It's, uh, yeah, it's, always, it's hot here, but it's still difficult to keep those tires up, to the tire pressures up when you're running behind the pace car. Yeah, and also he has six more laps on the tires than all the other guys, and every lap here counts. Although it's a very slippery circuit, it's quite abrasive once the circuit is clean. Uh, and definitely in the race that's what happens and there's a replay again he just carried a bit too much speed into turn one and Paul Tracy took the circumspect line around it and was able to go around the outside once again another angle coming head on down into turn one and just got a bit carried away with himself there beyond Bird Hunt didn't he? Yeah I think he was looking in his mirror to make sure Tracy wasn't overtaking him but look what, how fantastic it is for Tracy now he's opened a uh, big big gap to Bourdais and uh, some yeah, yeah. So, somehow Bourdais is really a long way back. I don't know, they must have had a problem with Wertheim somehow. Uh, yes, yeah, so maybe maybe he tried to make a pass in turn 10 and that didn't work out. But a big gap there from uh, first to second, Tracy to Wertheim, 2.2 seconds. So, so, so doing it again. again. He's again going straight and somebody else will tangled with. He's been dicing with Andrew Ranger, uh, our AJ Almendinger and Mar Ryan Hunter Ray. Looked like a PKV car there, didn't it? Yeah. Or was it Andrew Ranger's with similar colours? Sort of no, no, it was Vassar. BKV Jimmy Vassa. Vassa was running, well, that's interesting. Vassa was running in eighth place, and Mario was in 11th as they came past the line on lap 37 to complete lap 37. Jimmy Vassa now is the latest to uh, become uh, grounded there in turn when he's raving frantically for the Champ Car safety team to come to his aid. And there they are. You just and saw a flash of them there. This yellow is great for Wertheim because now he has another chance to fit under the yellow. Yeah. We're back to green one more time. Again, Nelson Philippe gets on the throttle. Mistake three through turn one into turn two, a nice tidy line. Bjorn Verdheim sliding a little bit wide on the exit, but still holding down second place. And Timo Glock is going to be hard uh, filling up his mirrors pretty quickly. Timo Glock is bouncing over the curbs there in the DHL Global Mail car in third place. New livery on that car this weekend. He ran the same sponsor. There's Bourdais looking to the inside of Paul Tracy, and they're happy they're going to make contact. Whoa, they are both going to make big contact coming off the corner. There's Cristiano bouncing around. I think it's hard for you to take over, Mario. <laughs> Great stuff there, tremendous action in midfield. I mean, um, Bourdais dived cleanly to the inside. Yeah, they got to the apex of the corner, and then they made contact. They made more contact coming off the corner. You saw a glimpse there of Paul Tracy in serious trouble. That left front wheel well awry, and his day is done. Yeah, I think Bourdais put a pr pretty good move on, on Tracy, but Tracy wouldn't let it go and uh, ended up with three wheels. Actually. Patience is the key in this business, is it not? Yeah, I mean, it would be much better for him to be second right now than having to retire. So, uh, pretty good boot, boot, pretty good move over there. Here's again a replay. It looks it's a late lunge down to the inside, no doubt about it. He's carrying a lot of speed at the apex, isn't he? Is uh, Sebastian Boy. It's a bold move, no doubt about that. And Paul Tracy, if you're going to make a bold move on Paul Tracy, it better be clean, because otherwise you're going to make contact. Look, there's the contact. Yeah, yeah it's strange, because they, they were out of the corner already. I don't Indeed. know. Cristiano also suffering there. Tagliani trying to take advantage there to nip back ahead of, uh, of, of him. You see Cristiano now in the pits. Here's a replay again. Down the inside goes Junquera as well. Here's the contact. Who are you blaming there? Oh, it's hard to see. <laughs> you know, it was a very bold move for Paul Bay. If you can try and pass Paul Tracy, you know that Paul Tracy is not going to give you any room. Paul Tracy didn't do anything wrong there, in my opinion. He kept his line coming off yeah. the corner, and Bourdais just drove him off the race. Yeah, no, he looked, looked different from the other angle, but Isn't I, it's that interesting. I don't think it was Paul's fault. I mean, Bourdais break late, and I mean, he didn't make a clean pass because they touched going into the corner, but I don't know, it's strange what happens coming out of it, which yeah. was the, the biggest part, which was Tracy the race. Yeah, I mean, they, they, Tracy was, was straightened up coming out of that corner before the initial contact was made, it appeared to me. And, you know, we've had a lot of calls in the past about avoidable contact. 
There's going to be a lot of work to talk down what about six or eight feet from where we are right now, right below us in race control. Was that avoidable contact on behalf of Sebastian Bourdais? Yeah, I'm sure they have plenty to talk about. There's that uh, Timo Glock move uh, a few laps ago, so I'm sure it's going crazy down there. Well, I talked to Craig Hansen a moment ago, and I said, will you talk and give us your side of the situation? He said, no, I will not. He said, all I'll do is get myself in trouble. And then he said, Tracy violated pit road protocol twice. It wasn't penalized. And then that happened. Well, we did know that Paul had been warned about putting uh, tires over the exit line out there. Whether the two are ever going to be tied together, we don't know. They're hot. Their man's still out there. Tracy's hot, and he's not. There we are. With Paul Tracy on the pit box, and you've had a chance to have a look at it, did you give Sebastian Bourdais room? Oh, I gave the guy plenty of room. I couldn't have given him any more room, you know, and it was pretty, uh, you know, pretty unrealistic. You know, he came in locked up. I moved out of the way for him and gave him room, and then he just drove over the front tire at the exit of the corner. So, you know, we're out of the race, and, and he gets a flat tire. We probably would have finished 1-2, so it was a stupid move on his part. Rangers. I mean, he made up a lot of ground through those last two, two corners because he was off on the grass from turn three and four, picked up a lot of dust and dirt and general rubbish on his cars. But look, he's, he's pretty much right there. Whoa, there's a mistake again from Bjorn Burnham. He gets over those curbs, slides on wide. He's going to lose at least one place. Is Ranger going to get on the inside? Yes, he is. Again, heads up driving by Verdun. Yes, he made a mistake, but he didn't do anything silly at the next corner to take himself out of the race. Look at Justin Wilson jumping around here, trying to find a way back past Alex Tagliani. So, yeah, that's great news for Gutierrez, because now he has a clear track in front of him. Uh, good for Ranger also, for Verdun is a bit between him and Tagliani. And uh, with seven, eight laps to go, they they have a pretty good chance for him. He's got to put his head down now. Here's a replay once again. You see the first curve. He hits the first curve hard. Takes him across to the curb on the left-hand side of the road. And then it's exit stage right from Bjorn, Bjorn Verdun. And uh, Bruno Shakira dives down the inside. And taking good advantage there is the youngster, Andrew Ranger, to bring him up into second place in pursuit now of that man. The Pacifica car, Newman House Racing, Bruno Shakira. The checkered flags for Bruno Junquera. A tremendous win here in the Takati Telmex Monterey Grand Prix round two of this year's Champ Car World Series. Jubilation there in the Newman House Racing Pits. This is Jeremy Shaw. Uh, thank you for being with us here in Monterey. We're going to be back with the Champ Car World Series in two weeks' time in Milwaukee. We hope you can join us then. See you then. Bye for now. The Ring of Fire, the Milwaukee Mile, the Bull Ring of the Champ Car World Series. Welcome. My name is Jeremy Shaw, and this is the Time Warner Cable Road Runner 250, presented by US Bank at the famous Milwaukee Mile. A great racetrack here. I think a lot of action in store this afternoon. 74 degrees is the temperature, 71% humidity. Really perfect racing conditions here for the Marble. It hasn't been that way all weekend. We've had a lot of, uh, lot of cloud for virtually the whole weekend so far. Just a two-day race meeting Friday, practice and qualifying yesterday, race day here on Saturday. It's a bit overcast now, there's rain forecast for later on, hopefully it will stay dry. The oldest continuously running racetrack in the world, 1903, the first race one here on the Milwaukee Mile, an average speed of 35 miles an hour, going to be a lot faster this afternoon. Today's pole sitter, Jimmy Vasso, has been his 220th consecutive start in 53 races since he won the pole. The oldest driver in the field at 39, a great pole position alongside of fellow American A.J. Allmendinger for the Rue Sport team. On row two of the grid, A.J.'s teammate, Justin Wilson, good run again for the young Briton, alongside in Cristiano De Matta, the 2002 Champ Car World Series champion. Row three of the grid, Paul Tracy, he won the series a couple of years ago. Sebastian Bourdais, the defending series champion alongside on row three. 
Row 4 of the grid, Ryan hunter the dominant winner here one year ago. And Bjorn Wertheim, the quickest qualifying rookie driver this weekend. Oriel Servia, driving for Newman Haas Racing this weekend on Row 5 alongside Mario Dominguez. Alex Tagliani and Nelson Philippe on Row 6. Row 8, Marcus Marshall and Ronnie Bremer. R Ricardo Sperifico alone at the back of the field. Dale Coyne Racing running just one car this weekend because its regular driver, Oriel Servia, has been tapped to drive this car, the Pacific Air car of Newman House Racing, because Bruno Junquiera, who came in here leading the points, has suffered a horrendous accident one week ago in the in Indianapolis 500. We're going to have a look at that right now. He was passing AJ Foyt the fourth in the early stages of the race. He got tagged. A huge, huge impact and he's suffered a broken back in that accident a heavy heavy impact well over a hundred G's he's going to be out for quite a quite a long time and unfortunately bad news for the Brazilian but a good opportunity for Oriol Servia Bruno Junqueira as you can see leading the points after the second round in Monterey Sebastian Bourdain now has a great opportunity to move ahead in the point standings just one point behind here coming this weekend Justin Wilson with two fourth place finishes already this year standing a very strong third in the points and Paul Tracy, he's looking for a good run here. He's won here three times in the past. Out comes the green and Jimmy Vassar gets a good jump. Paul Tracy immediately jumps to the outside line. He's passing his outside run, but he can't quite squeeze past AJ Hobbit or can he? Yes, he can. Wow, what a movement coming off the corner, right? Where did that power come from? Yeah, it's a, an amazing line through one and two, actually. The, the press line three is just a little off the inside, and I think for sure uh, Paul knows that he's got plenty of experience and used that against AJ. I think what happened there is Paul Tracy used to push the pass, and now he's pressuring Jimmy Vassar going down the inside into turn one. Jimmy Vassar closes the door, boy. That was tight. Yeah, that was uh, that was a ballsy move for sure from Paul, but uh, yeah, Jimmy's not going to take that. <laughs> I don't think he is, and uh, that was a very scary move indeed at the front of the field, but they got away with it. Jimmy Vassar still leads, and uh, Paul Tracy is uh, charging there in second place. In third place is AJ Olmedo, fourth is his teammate Justin Wilson, behind them is Cristiano Damada, and behind them is that battle there. Sebastian Bourdais just fending off the second of the index foresight cards of Mario Dominguez, who looks down on the inside in turn three and makes a textbook pass going down on the inside line right here. Yeah, Newman Haas are you know, not, not got their best cars on the Oles here, and I think uh, you're going to see that today with Sebastian and Oriol. They're probably going to struggle a little bit. Good back and forth battle. Sebastian got a good run back off turn four, but uh, Mario Dominguez on that outside line, the preferred groove going into turn one. There's a lot of different lines you can take around this racetrack, right? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting. You know, the Forsyth cars have struggled all weekend, and uh, they weren't that good in the test here, but, uh, you know, obviously both of them are running pretty well here, whether they're running light on fuel or... You know, Paul was quick in the warm-up this morning, but, you know, the, the groove this year has not been as good as previous years with the, the cold temperatures, so it'll be interesting to see how long this lasts during the race. The, the, all the teams were t testing here about a month ago, all that is except for Dale Coyne Racing, and it was a very, very, very competitive timesheet at the end of those two days of testing. Several drivers found the wall during that test, and uh, two heavy impacts from Rocket Sports Racing, both Timo Glock and Ryan hunter Ray crashed heavily coming out of turn four. Ronnie Bremer, the rookie, another guy to crash, not quite so heavily, but there was a lot of damage during that test, but certainly most of the teams got a good baseline set up with which to come here this weekend. Oh, there's bad news. That's Ryan Hunter Ray, Rocket Sports racing that disastrous test, and it's no better here as well. Ryan had started well. He'd qualified well among the top ten. He wasn't particularly confident coming into the race, and maybe that is why. He certainly started off the race running in pretty good shape. Here. There's a replay. Wow, boy. What an impact that was. Rear end. It looked like he was almost square into the wall with the back end of the car. And that puts all those forces through the car. And uh, you can see now the uh, the Champ Car Safety Team is on the scene. But that's got to be a huge impact. He's probably going through that corner at about 180 miles an hour. And when you hit the wall backwards at that speed, you're going to suffer some injuries. But it, uh, he seems so. He's got his, his hands clasped over his, over his uh, tummy there. Maybe he's going to be OK. We certainly hope so. Our best wishes to Ryan hunter Ray. The green flag is out right now. Jimmy Vass is on the power and Paul Tracy is looking to make his patented outside move. He tries it to the outside in turn one. Look at that, a very different line through the corner. And it is, this is uh, absolutely wheel to wheel that's down a, the back straight. That's a brave move from Paul if he can go into three and four like that. 
we would look certainly Same much more often to the outside move made in turns one and two, I think, than three and four. But Paul Tracy, what an opportunistic move that was. A great move by Paul Tracy. He just hung in there, and he was not going to live, was he? Yeah, I mean, Paul said Jimmy Hop coming on to the restart there. He was on the outside. He had such a better run coming into turn one. And, you know, I think at this point, the thing is that they both used so much push to pass at this point in the stage. I mean, you know, it's, it's early in the race and, uh, you know, they both used three quarters of what they have. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you've got 19 seconds left, I think, of the 60 seconds as Paul Tracy. You have 60 seconds off the push to pass button. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Champ Car World Series, and here's a replay again of Jimmy Vassa and Paul Tracy, the two veterans of the Champ Car World Series. Jimmy Vassa, the former champion in 1996, Paul Tracy, the champion two years ago, absolutely wheeled a wheel all the way through turn three and four, and it is Paul Tracy that comes out with the advantage, and at the same time, his teammate Mario Dominguez also made a move around Cristiano Damada, that was for fifth place, so both of the Forsyth race against is on the move in the early stages, we've got 21 laps in the books, fastest lap right now set by Paul Tracy on that last lap around a 22.847 second average speed 162 miles an hour in the very early stages of this race. Tracy leads the race, then AJ right behind him, then the lap's car of Sebastian Bourdais, then the other lap's car of Nelson Philippe has got right out of the way. Good work by Nelson, he's going to get out of the way, so that will move Oriol Servia just to, uh, there's one car, his teammate, between himself and the two leaders, and uh, Oriol Servia made a very poor restart, the, the uh, green flag is out, Paul Tracy is on the gas, AJ is right behind him, and Oriol Servia did not get a good jump in third place, so we have ten laps to go, the green is out, Paul Tracy has robbed away at the restart, once again on cold tyres flying away at the front but a good advantage he did himself and the second place car of Almendinger Oriol Serbia is in third place and Oriol and the fourth place car of Justin Wilson and the fifth place car of Jimmy Vassar and the third and fourth guys Serbia and Wilson have a lot of push to time push to pass time left 30 seconds for Serbia, 21 for Wilson Vassar has just 4 seconds of usage left so Jimmy though he's, he, he had closed right up I think on the fourth place car of Jimmy, uh, Justin Wilson. I don't think Jimmy is close enough to make a pass. There goes Tracy one more time. That advantage stretch a little bit more. Again, the fastest lap of the race so far by Paul Tracy. 22.298 seconds. The fastest lap of the race so far. Just a couple of ticks away from the best set, uh, lap time set last year in this race by a totally dominant Ryan Hunter Ray. And Paul Tracy is flying. Yeah, I think Paul's just stamping his authority here. He's, uh, he's not going to be touched here. And uh, AJ, you know, got a decent restart. But, you know, to be fair, Paul in the first lap on the cold tires here is just phenomenal. And he's just uh, walking away with it here. So we're hearing from race control. There's just one minute left in this motor race. So it would be another couple of laps, maybe three, depending on when they come past start finish line. There goes Paul Tracy. His lead now is over two seconds. 22.4 that time around. 22.6. A personal best fastest lap for AJ Almeninger, but still he lost a couple of tenths to the race leader. So Paul Tracy now is sitting pretty at the front of the field. We're on board again with AJ Almeninger. He's pushing as hard as he can, but he's unable to track down Paul Tracy. And here comes Paul. He's looking. There is the white flag. Looking for win number 29 in his career. And it's been a faultless ride by Paul Tracy this afternoon, Ryan DL. Just two corners to go. Yeah, I think... Uh... Paul's done an amazing job, and uh, like I say, after that last uh, yellow, he really deserved to win this, and uh, Forsyth have been incredible, untouchable all day. Here he comes, off turn four, there are the waving jacket flags, win number 28 for Paul Tracy, the 2003 uh, Champ Car World Series champion, a brilliant drive by him, he took the lead in, uh, in uncompromising terms at the start of the race, he's led it all the way, that late caution certainly did not play to his favour, but uh, once again he takes full advantage of his prowess on cold tyres and he romps away from AJ Almeninger to get a great victory and it was certainly a super run by him AJ finishes in second Oriol Serbia magnificent third for Newman House Racing his debut for that team there is Sebastian Bourdais Wilson finishes fourth Vassa in fifth Bourdais one lap down in sixth also one lap down Mario Dominguez and Ronnie Bremer in, uh, in uh, eighth place Timo Glock a very impressive ninth Tagliani in tenth and here are the donuts I think uh, Paul's just trying to impress the drifting boys that have been here all day by putting his own lines down. We've 
which is in the Formula Drift cars here, turning some very impressive uh, donuts all weekend long here. And as you say, 800 horsepower. He's got a little bit of an advantage, Peter, hasn't he? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's uh, actually a really hard thing to do. And, uh, There's I'd not say, much room down there. I'd either. say Zanardi would be pretty impressed with those rings. They're pretty good. On the road again. The pole sitter this weekend is Justin Wilson. Just a great job by him. He was quickest on both days of qualifying. His first ever pole, first also for the Roosport team, alongside him, AJ Allmendinger, the second race in a row, starting on the front row of the grid. Back on row two of the grid, Paul Tracy. He was the, the pole sitter here in 03. He's been here 12 times, but he's never won at Portland. Alex Tagliani had a, a podium finish and set fastest lap a couple of years ago. Sebastian Bourdais, he won from the pole here last season for New and house racing mario dominguez will start alongside andrew ranger the young rookie from canada just 18 years old excellent qualifying performance for the my jack team and jimmy vassar he won here in 1998 ronnie bremer had a big crash yesterday 50 g's uh, he's uh, feeling very very sore today but that car is on to the, on the grid timo glock the german he's been struggling this weekend for the rocket sports team oriel serbia he had boost problems on friday and yesterday's qualifying the track was slower bjorn vertheim will start on row seven alongside the Brazilian Ricardo Spirofigo for Dale Coyne Racing. Row 8, the second of the coin cards for Michael Valianti. Ryan Hunter, Ray boy, he's been struggling all season long in the second of the Rocket Sports cars. Nelson Philippe will start on row 9 alongside him. The Australian Marcus Marshall, and Marcus was a lot happier with his uh, Walker Racing Team Australia car after the warm-up session this morning. Here we go. The 18 carpet is all set, ready for the green flag, and there it is. GD Wilbur waves the green flag, and the two Roosport cars absolutely wheel to wheel down towards the festival curves. 175 miles now, down to about 35 for turn one. Justin has the inside line, and look at that Paul Tracy around the outside line. Great move by Paul Tracy up into second place. No, the new layout down there at the festival chicane allows people to force the issue sometimes without paying a price that they used to. Yeah, they've, they've uh, opened up the second part of that corner down there. It made it, the drivers are much happier, it gives it much more of a flow, I think, and the drivers really enjoying that section of the track. Great to see, that's the first time in as long as I can remember, they've already got through that first turn unscathed. So Justin Wilson, a tremendous start from the pole position. He leads the motor race. Paul Tracy has jumped from third into second, ahead of AJ Allmendinger. And those two, of course, uh, go back uh, quite a long time. AJ is only uh, 22 years of age, but he uh, owes a lot of his career, really, to Paul Tracy. He drove for Paul's team in karting, and Paul is... Uh, He's used his uh, authority there to get past the youngster on the opening lap, a trademark uh, coal tar move by Paul Tracy. Absolutely, he's always aggressive at the start. And the fourth place, I think, is uh, Alex Tagliani. That's uh, certainly a great one, actually. I think it's been dropped by Sebastian Bourdais here. So McDonald's car is in the fourth place. Tagliani hits the dice a little bit farther back there. Two cars going side by side. I think it was Timo Glock and Jimmy Vassar, I believe that was, for about uh, ninth or tenth place. And uh, again, they seem to have made it through there. Quite amazing. You ready? Well, we haven't actually seen it. He's got through two laps in a row, but it certainly looks like it, Chris. Well, Justin's got the, the bit in his teeth today, and you can see the field's already starting to fan out. So, uh, you know, this should be... It looks, looks right now like it's, everyone's just going to settle into their strategy and just see how the setups play out. That was a quick glance of Cristiano Lamada making a very early pit stop. It's like routine service though for Cristiano. I think the team probably realized that uh, they're going to make it. It's going to be a three pit stop race. So if he's stuck there behind, who was he following? He's behind uh, Oriol Serbia, I think, wasn't it? Uh, so he's pulled out of line there, get into the pits, get on fresh tires, and maybe uh, if he can get a fresh, uh, some clear track in front of him, maybe Cristiano can turn some good laps and maybe move 
move effectively move up the order by the time everybody else makes uh, their first pit stops, Chris Dyson. Yeah, usually, usually, Jeremy, the way it works here is that there's not many yellows. So, uh, you know, they, it could have just been their strategy. You never know. He could have flat spotted a tire um, and pitted early. But, you know, the race could come back to him. Uh, these races have a tendency of, of kind of uh, falling into the hands of those who guess right. And we hear from the pits that uh, Christiana said the back end of the car was just really loose. The oversteer on that car, he just, uh, he just wasn't happy with it. So, you know, come in now, make an early stop and get out there and hopefully they'll make a quick change to that car. Probably maybe a tire pressure adjustment. I think they put, maybe put in, uh, took out a little bit of front wing as well, just trying to loosen up the front end of the car and bring it back into balance. Here's Bjorn Wirth. I'm also making an early pit stop. Number four car, the Eurosport car of the HVM team. And uh, Bjorn Wirth, done a pretty good job. You can see there taking uh, out some front wing on that angle. So again, maybe that car is loose. They're trying to loosen up the front of that, the end of that car and just balance out the grip, Chris. Yeah, absolutely, Jeremy. Like I said, I mean, you know, people complain about understeer but there's nothing worse here than oversteer. Yeah, because it's just going to chew up your tires. It's going to be hard work around here as well, isn't it? It's just busier. Um, you know, understeer, you can nurse it much easily, much more easily on the throttle, and, and an oversteer, you're just chasing the rear end in these long corners. You just can't have it. You, can't have it. you can see he's on the black tires there. He's Bjorn Bertheim as uh, there goes uh, Paul Tracy, I think, to put a lap on him. So he's going to be shown as one lap down. I think that was PT going past. Uh, so uh, also Cristiano Damana put the black tires on as well, and he's reported already that the car just feels better balanced on the black tires and not the red tires. That's Cristiano Damana. So Cristiano now shown in 16th place, Bjorn Wertheim in 17th. And I think Bjorn is one lap down, but I'm pretty sure no, Cristiano is not. So Cristiano is last on the road of those on the lead lap. Wertheim is one lap down in 17th place, and Alex Tagliani, the only driver out of the race. The uh, other guy that's having a problem right now is Ryan hunter Ray. He's running in 12th place, and the team is telling him just to hold on as long as he can before they make their first stop. On board again now with Justin Wilson, and he's uh, extended that lead now again, just super, super consistent. Every lap is within hundreds or even thousands of a second. One minute point nine two four that time for Justin Wilson. Stay on board with the, the with the telemetry for Justin Wilson. Uh, you can see there, Jeremy, just a little bit of understeer, but he's very happy with the balance. Um, and uh, you can see Justin, you know, rewarding the Sport guys. They gave him a great car, and, and he's. You know, definitely a man on a mission this weekend. Is Cristiano De Matter. He was the first man to make a pit stop. He's now in for his second routine stop of the afternoon. Cristiano De Matter. Don Oldenburg is the crew chief on that car. He's on the outside front tire, the right side as we look at it. He will give the signal for Cristiano to rejoin the fray after the fuel has gone. And there is, looks like another great stop by Don's guys and that PKB racing crew of car number 21. Uh, and uh, De Matter, he asked for the... Uh, the uh, alternate tyres, the red sidewall tyres this time around, he started on those tyres, then he ran very, very quickly on the blacks in the middle stint, on the second stint of the race, and now he's uh, got a good rhythm on that car, and he's switched to the alternate tyres again for this third stint of the race, and propitious timing, and jo joined by uh, Joe Barbieri, who is uh, from Bridgestone Motorsport, and Joe, it's great that we see this strategy differences between the black tyres and the red tyres, just tell us a little bit about the differences between those two tyres here from Bridgestone. That was certainly our intent when we uh, brought the two different type tyres, the, the red sidewall Bridgestones uh, have a little softer compound, uh, they're a little quicker, somewhere around almost about a half second or better, depending on car setup and style. Uh, but, of course, you run the risk of uh, that tire may go away just a little quicker than the uh, black sidewall Bridgestones. Now, explain to us how Cristiano De Matter was running a lot quicker uh, in his second sit there on the blacks than he was on the reds, huh? I believe that might have a lot to do with the highest uh, track temperature that we've seen so far this weekend. So that the little harder tires may, may prove out to be better over a longer stint. Uh, it's, uh, last time we looked, it was about 128 degrees Fahrenheit on the track temperature, so that was pretty hot. Yeah, there's a lot, very hot. You know, these guys, have to, the, the crews have to make a lot of changes to these cars. We've seen the weather conditions today right now are absolutely perfect from my perspective. Yes. Is that, is that, are they perfect from your perspective as a tire engineer? Well, uh, I guess uh, everybody would like it to be a little more overcast. Would take Justin Wilson has slowed down at the festival. Oh, no. It looks like he maybe has a gearbox problem. Oh, my goodness. He was way up. 
ominous sounds from the back of that car. It looked like he was fishing for gears there. He's done absolutely everything perfectly today as Justin Wilson. He was out in front. He had a 10-second lead over Paul Tracy, lapping incredibly consistently. Everything was looking just right. He's on the radio there reporting back to the team, and uh, we'll find out what's wrong. It sounded like it might have been a gearbox problem, but whatever it is, it looks like Justin Wilson's day is done. And what a disaster, Chris Dicey. He was done. He was driving the perfect race. Oh, that's such a tragedy for, for Carl and, and, and everybody at Bruce Ford. Now. That's Steve Wolf, the team manager there on the pit wall, uh, on the on the radio to Justin Wilson. Now Cristiano is just three laps to go to what would be just a fabulous day for himself, for Kevin Calcone, for Dan Pettit, for Jimmy Vassar. And Jimmy, of course, is a big part, along with Jim McGee, of bringing Cristiano back into this ride. And uh, it will certainly be a, a joyous day for all of those guys. It's been, a, it's been a really good race here. I think this afternoon there's a good crowd here on hand and uh, all sorts of interesting things going on, going on during this race. What are you going to be doing between here and Cleveland? You've got, we're racing again at the Grand Prix of Cleveland at Burke Freight Lake Front Depot just one week from now. What do you guys do between here and there? Uh, not much, just uh, try to recover. This, this race is actually quite, quite physical and the next one even more. Cleveland is probably the most physical race we have. So we're just going to have a couple of days to, to relax and uh, go through this weekend, uh, see what we did right and wrong and uh, probably Wednesday fly to Cleveland already, so there's, there's, there's not much time between. Certainly indeed, so uh, thanks Oriel Servi for joining us here. It's great to see you, well it's not great to see you, I'd much rather see you in about uh, five minutes at the end of this motor racing victory circle. Top but, of uh, the thanks podium. For joining us. Huh? In the top of the podium. There we go. It'll come soon. I know you waited a long time for a race win and I know your opportunity is going to come with the Newman House team. They're telling Chris on the radio, easy on the fuel, we're all right, just be easy on the fuel. So uh, no major concerns there probably, but certainly uh, if you heard that on your radio, uh, Oriol, when they say easy on the fuel, if we're all right, just be easy. If they, leave, if they tell you easy on the fuel, two laps to go, you really get worried because there's not much you can do at this point. I mean, you're not going to save much in two laps and if they tell you it's because they really think that, could, that you could run into some trouble. So, I, I mean, I hope for his behalf that he doesn't. Not for my team, though. <laughs> here's, the, here's the guy in second place. There is the white flag to Cristiano De Manos. So just one more lap of this 1.917 mile racetrack at Portland International Raceway. Down through the gears, down the second gear, through the festival curves. You go through uh, now at about uh, 45 miles now, 50 miles now, a bit over 50 miles now. It's uh, up about the average speed through that corner. The minimum speed through that corner is up by about uh, eight or nine miles now over last year due to those changes. Here he comes through this rhythm section of the track, the west end of the racetrack, turns two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Third gear through most of here, briefly up into fourth, down to third again, the corner onto the back straightaway, and now less than a mile to go for Cristiano De Manon. He's done everything right this afternoon. The white flag is out. He's got uh, just a couple of corners to go. The quick chicane here, taken in fourth gear at about 135 miles an hour, and now down into the final corner for Cristiano De Manon. And uh, if he's got any fuel concerns now, he hasn't. He's accelerated cleanly out of there. He's onto the front straight. The victory is in sight. There are the dual twek checkered flags from J.D. Wilbur. And the first win for PKB Racing is in the books. Jubilation. There is Kevin Kalkoven with his arm in a sling. But boy, he is going to be absolutely thrilled. Uh, what a great day for his team. And uh, here we're going to see the victory donuts here down in the, uh, what used to be uh, the gravel trap. But now you can put a proper place to do the donuts, Oriol Servia. Yeah, I think it's an artist started to do that. It's become a tradition now. Uh, it's been a while Cristiano didn't do his, so I'm sure he's happy he's doing them again. It's been a long time, for, it's been a long time, but it's only been a half a dozen champ car races since his last win uh, for uh, Oriol. He won his last race was in Mexico back in 2002 during his championship season, so just a tremendous uh, return here to the champ car world series and to victory lane for Cristiano no matter A job well done and the crew is thrilled and uh, Newman House also thrilled for Bourdais in second place. From Cleveland, Ohio, it's round five of the 2005 season as Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series, powered by Ford. Hey, Cleveland, you're listening to Slats 923X, Cleveland's Extreme Radio. Beautiful day in the birthplace of rock and roll and the Champ Car World Series back in town. With four races so far this season, a different winner at each, today's Grand Prix looks to be a showdown by the lake. 
J.D. Wilbur waves the checkered flag over Sebastian Bourdais. His first win of 2005, Bruno Junquera grabs the checkers here in Mexico. Paul Tracy wins his fourth Champ Car World Series event here on the Milwaukee Mile. Here's Cristiano Damata is back in a Champ Car victory lane at Portland. Like there he is nice and early and Paul Tracy got a great jump off the corner Cristiano de Maracana kept he was uh, I think caught out of whack a little bit and Sebastian Bourdais moves down the inside are they going to get around the first corner cleanly nope they're not I think that's Ryan Hunter Ray who's got bumped and both of the HVM cars Bjorn Birdheim and Ronnie Bremer both involved down there right at the apex of turn one it's uh, the two uh, rookie sports cars now look almost, look identical because they are identical liveries Ryan Hunter Ray used sponsorship this weekend from Cytomax Sport Drink and he was the, the second of the qualifiers of those two cars I fear for him that it was Ryan who was involved in that incident down that turn one. Yeah, I'm going to have to see the replay again. I'm not really sure what happened, but, it, you know, it's the classic thing. Somebody goes down the inside and it breaks himself a little bit. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, when, when the field's that tight at that corner, you're always going to collect more than one person. The uh, Champ Car Safety Team is right on the action uh, pretty quickly, and uh, the race leader, the, the full course caution is out. We'll have a replay again. The front of the field, pretty clean, because see how wide this runway is. It goes over from 100 feet wide right down into this very tight apex, and I think just a little bump. Well, it looks like the, uh, the first, I think it looked like uh, Ronnie Bremer perhaps spun on his own there. Here is Jimmy Vassar, the second of the BKB cars, onto pit lane, and these strategies are very, very interesting. These days, if there is a full course caution, the pits are closed as a matter of course. Doesn't matter what happens, that's new for this year, and what that means is if you haven't yet made a pit stop when a full course caution comes out towards the end of a fuel stint, then you are unable to come in, and there's dodgy, it's always dodgy here at the Reefs, and you come out of the pit lane, yeah, and weaves job. in front of... Uh, of Mario Dominguez, I presume so. You know, I, I what what I think. Uh, you know, this worked for PKV last week with Cristiano. They they got stuck in traffic with him, and they brought him in similar time. Uh, it looks like they're going to try and do it again with Jimmy. I know Jimmy's had a quick car all weekend. He's just not been able to get out of traffic and, and put it down. But yeah. you know, warm up this morning he was quicker than Cristiano, and there's been a oh weekend really they've been close. So. It's going to be interesting to see if, uh, if Jimmy can pay this off. Here's a replay here of uh, Jimmy Vassar come out. These two other two guys have both pitted already. He has to weave his way through just behind Mario Dominguez and between him and Justin Wilson. So these three cars have all made a pit stop and Justin uh, Wilson is the third of three, these three cars. Jimmy made a good run there to get through, but I'm pretty sure that Mario Dominguez uh, on the, uh, the hotter tires is going to be able to take this position back again going into turn three. Here again with uh, Sebastian Bourdais in third place, trying to trace down the two leaders. They're all going quicker and quicker and quicker at the front of the field. Cristiano the manager just turned the fastest lap of the race at a 59.1 seconds. The race lap record here is set by um, Paul Tracy, in actual fact, from 2002 at a 58.4. The fastest lap of the race last year was by Bruno Junquera at a 58.9. So we're doing the low 59s already in the early stages of the race. Shows how hot the pace is here in Cleveland this afternoon. Whoa! Dominguez and Justin Wilson. Yeah, I kind of seen that coming to pass couple of laps. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is going to... Uh, I'm thinking this is going to fall into play for a lot of guys fuel-wise here. Uh, it's going to be a full course. I, I don't think I don't there is. Know, unless there's debris on the track. Yeah, unless there's debris on the track, you're right. But that was Dominguez and Wilson came together. They were battling 
over 14th place down in turns three and four. You can see there's Domingos on the inside, Wilson on the outside, side by side to the right hand of turn three, and then coming down, Justin Wilson's on the dirty side of the track. He gets it sideways and he just clips. You can see a bit of the uh, the flip up, I think, on the rear of the side pod from Domingos' car goes flying through the air. And uh, you have to say it was probably Justin's fault, really. He was pushing the envelope there a little bit. Yeah, uh, you know, Mario made the inside move, and I give Mario credit. He actually, you know, he, he gave Justin as much room as he possibly could on the exit. So, um, you know, Justin just got loose. Yeah. Well, there is Cristiano Amada making a pit stop, and the full course caution was out. I guess he must have been already committed to the pit lane before that caution came out. So this could be a big move. A big stroke, stroke of good luck for Cristiano yeah. Damada because as I said earlier on, once the full course caution is shown, you're not allowed to make a pit stop until the pit lane is open. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, the the flag comes out, the pit lane is closed, you cannot make a pit stop until the until everybody else is backed up behind the pace car. The, the, most of these Lolas, some of them date back as far as the year 2000. Uh, sort of the car that uh, Tarzan Marquez is running this afternoon is a, a, a 2000 chassis. The car with which Sebastian Bourdais won earlier in the season at Long Beach, that was an 01 chassis. So there's little to choose here. There's still very, there's no difference to the chassis of the car, but they're obviously newer components, although the teams, you know, they'd lie for all the parts. So there's always new components going on these cars. So even though it's an 01 or a, or a double, you know, a, a two K chassis, there's still a very much up-to-date equipment. Yeah, it's actually quite interesting. You know, after I think the five years that this car has been around now, that the Lola, even this weekend, there's still people like Newman Haas, PKV, Forsyth, coming up with new developments in the wing. I mean, you know, I'd say last year you would have thought that you'd found the optimum performance, but every time you turn up, somebody has another flap on. And, you know, I know this weekend that Forsyth have had their wings covered every every possibility opportunity, but... Well, that's a, yeah. th there's another good story about Forsyth Racing because they are paddocked here opposite the Roosport team. And Roosport actually hired, they have a security guard, uh, a, a guard dog, if you like, a, 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 by the, underneath their awnings next to the transporters. And a, a burly young lady who was uh, making sure that nobody else was going to gain access to, to their tent area, to their, to their garage area. And right across the, sort of the, uh, the uh, walkway from them is a Forsyth team. And uh, they decided to be a pretty good wheeze to set up a, uh, a pair of binoculars on a tripod pointing directly at the back of Justin Wilson's car. And that caused a great amount, amount of merriment in the Forsyth team. And they're, take, they're taking notes on what is going on in the, in the garage across the street. And the Roosport guys are getting pretty upset, so that was quite amusing. But as you say, you know, they're trying to keep these secrets. They're de constantly developing these cars and trying to keep their secrets to themselves. Yeah, I mean, whoops. Uh oh. Christiana. Cheers, Cristiano de Mata, the race leader. Whoa, whoa, what a disaster. He must have made contact with something or somebody, obviously, otherwise the, the wheel wouldn't be off. There was another car going slowly. I didn't quite catch a glimpse of who it was, but the race leader is in trouble here. 51 laps in the books. Cristiano de Mata's race is run. Yeah, I think it was actually maybe one of the Team Australia cars. It kind of looked I think like it was Marcus Marshall. You're right. He was shown here just about a lap down, and uh, it looks like there was contact between those two coming through that 9 and 10 chicane. Here's a replay. You can see there is uh, Timo Glock coming out of the corner. Yeah, it's, it's uh, yes, the incident has already happened. It's Christiano Marcus Marshall. Cristiano was trying to go down the inside. And yep. it, it, we really did a camera angle before that to see what happened, but it's, it's obvious that Cristiano hit the, the right side of... Uh, Marshall's back end of Marshall's car. You can see the damage to the right rear of Marcus Marshall's Team Australia car. And uh, what uh, frustration, disappointment for Cristiano de Mano. He's looking to uh, make it back to back wins in consecutive weekends. It's not going to happen for the likable Brazilian shorty he's known. Just five foot four inches tall, weighs next to nothing, um, even when he's wet. Uh, but he was just doing a stellar job this weekend. He was looking, looking to get win number 13 of his career. It's not going to happen. His race is run, and Marcus Marshall looks like damage to the right rear suspension on the car number five. But it's, you know, even when you're lapping a slower car into that quick chicane, it's not very easy, is it? No, I mean, that, that quick chicane, chicane is extremely quick. And, uh, you know, Marshall's laps down, it's... Uh, It'd be disappointing to, to see if it was him that caused the problem. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt until we see the replay. But, uh, you know, with that kind of, you know, either way, either way, you know, Cristiano maybe could have backed off and uh, Marshall maybe should have backed off. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see if we can get a better angle. There's AJ Omening a rejoining after a routine pit stop.
there is the white flag. One lap to go for Paul Tracy. And here's a battle for second place. Look at that, Olmendinger with Serbia right on his tail. So that battle isn't over yet. A 58-6-1-6 for Oriol Serbia. New fastest lap of the race with just one lap to go for Oriol. Great work by the Spaniard. Tremendous to see, 30 years of age. And this, is, as you say, is his great opportunity. And he has grabbed it with both hands. And look at it, there's nothing between the two of them as they come round turns three and four. Can he do it, Ryan? Well, it's, it's funny, Serbia two laps ago had 40 seconds of push to pass. Right now he has zero. He's been he's been doing everything he can to catch up with AJ here. But I don't think so. He's not close enough. And to be fair, I don't think Oreo's going to risk a podium finish for one more position. You're right. All of the top four have used all of their push to pass. Bordet has 10 seconds left. That's not going to do him any good. He's well behind Tagliani. And now just one chicane to go for Paul Tracy. He's been off at this corner two or three times this weekend. No mistakes this time around. He gets out of the corner absolutely perfectly. It's going to be check and flag number 30 for Paul Tracy. Tremendous work for the Indec Forsyth Racing Team. There's his mum, Vivian, on the left. Wife, Paddy, on the right, getting the congratulations. There's Neil Mickwright, the Vice President of Operations for that team. And BT, the celebratory donuts down in turn one. Job well done. And I tell you what, he's become very, very good at these donuts, Ryan, hasn't he? Yeah, he's definitely got this in already now. No, he's, uh, he's been doing them long enough. He should have them right. Ryan Yell, thanks so much for joining me here in Cleveland this afternoon. A tremendous race. I hope you've all enjoyed it. My name is Jeremy Shaw. We'll be back here again in two weeks' time in Toronto. For now, thanks very much for joining us. See you then. The first steel reinforced barrier was placed on Lakeshore Boulevard in 1986, beginning an indelible tradition. Gentlemen, 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 gentlemen start your engines. Something special, something marvelous. Bobby Rahal has just moved into first place ahead of Danny Sullivan. Bobby Rahal takes the checkered flag, and here comes Sullivan. Think alive. But if Baldy carries on, he's going to win the race. For 20 years, the greatest drivers in the world have challenged downtown Toronto. Success embraced some. On your feet, Toronto, Tracy, checkered flag. While others met disappointment. And Reddy has smacked Guerrero's car on the lakeshore. Yet all would leave their mark. The names of Toronto's 11 winners are forever branded on the hearts of racing fans the world over. One driver found his first taste of victory here, while another seemed unable to lose. Michael Andretti to seventh, Walson Indy, Toronto. Over the years, so many moments seem to rise from these streets. Today marks the 20th running of an open wheel racing classic. It's time to celebrate, to make new memories. It's time to run the Grand Prix of Toronto. So the Molson Indy Toronto, always one of the highlights on the schedule. It's a, it's a great event, Sebastian Bourdais. You bounced back uh, from qualifying yesterday. You hit the wall in the, in the free qualifying practice, but you came back and uh, won the pole. T tough ask, it's a tall order for you to do that. Yeah, it was, uh, it was quite a difficult uh, thing to, to achieve, but, uh, you know, how do I guess for the mechanics? And for me, they, they did an awesome job, and the McDonald's crew uh, brought it back together on time, and I could uh, challenge for the pole, and uh, we got it done, so it, uh, it feels very good. Bit of deja vu here. I mean, you were second last year to pull Tracy. Uh, same again this time. You come back and get the pole. Can you do what you get, did uh, last year and win the race? Well, I, you know, it's, it's a tough venue here. Everybody is uh, trying really hard, but you can see a lot of mistakes, and... Uh, doesn't take very much so yeah obviously we've done it so we know we can but uh, are we going to do it again for the moment we only can say we'll try i think it's great for the championship we've got the two, the two top championship guys on the front row of the grid it's going to be an exciting race isn't it yeah for you for sure <laughs> what about for you what's we'll the first see, corner no. going to be like well i guess uh, as i said many times we, we started side by side with pt many times and uh, i'm not worried about it it's just uh, you know to try hopefully to see a clean start and usually the troubles are coming from the back, so we see, uh, hopefully, we're getting uh, out of reach. It's 
so the last two champions of this series are on the front row of the grid it's going to be a very exciting race no doubt about it so the pace car is in the field is forming up sebastian bordet on the pole paul tracy alongside is there is the green flag aj orman there trying to get down the inside sebastian bordet made a great stop but can paul tracy get a run coming out of the corner there's uh, mario dominguez i think squeezed out wide Last year, you might remember, Dominguez and Bruno Junqueira got together in that corner. They both crashed heavily. They all got the, through the first time. He would come down now. Down Lakeshore Boulevard. That is a block in my book, Ronnie Bremer. You're not allowed to deviate, to deviate from the racing line to defend your position. How do you call that? It's difficult, especially on the start, <laughs> because on the start you'll always do that. Uh, in a way, it was a kind of a blocking, but still, I think it was uh, appropriate. You know, it, it's, it's going down there, he turns in a little bit too early, he's not on the race pace yet. He has done the first lap, so how can you decide if it's the race line or not? So well, that's a difficult call. It's a very difficult call, and that's been a, a bone of contention certainly over the last few years, but they brought in this rule a couple of years ago, whereby you're not allowed to deviate from your racing line. Now, we've, uh, we were talking about it before we came on the air, you and I, Ronnie Brenner, that Paul Tracy this weekend has tended to use a middle line down Lakeshore Boulevard, and that kind of keeps the options open for him, but certainly it looked like he had a run on Sebastian Bourdais, and it looked to me like Bourdais protected the inside line going to that corner, so we're going to have to wait and see whether there's any call from uh, race control. The race director is Tony Cotman, and I'm sure he is reviewing that tape, but as you can see, Sebastian Bourdais has uh, made a good jump on that opening lap and there is his teammate Mario Dominguez for the second year running last year of course he was in your car the number 55 car for the Erdes Motorsport to HVM team uh, he had a big crash with Bruno Junqueira the good news is at least this time he's able to get it back to the pits the bad news is he's had to get back to the pits and therefore is now going to rejoin at the back of the pack but it's still champ car you never know uh, I think he locked up in the beginning so he had to come in to get new tires uh, I think he had a big uh, flat spot but again you know, you're coming into the pit lane early, so you're out of strategy already, so it, it can easily make up. No, I mean, he spun at Monterey last year, and he came third. That's exactly true. That's, again, one of the great things about this series, I believe, that the different strategic decisions you can make to get yourself back in contention. As we've seen already this year, uh, when the if, the if and when there is a full course caution, the pits are closed. So you're not allowed to make a pit stop initially until the pack is all packed up behind the pace car. Then the pits are open, and then you can make a pit stop. So if you already made a pit stop before the pits are closed, before the full course caution comes out, then uh, you're going to cycle through ahead of everybody else when they come into the pit lane. It sounds very complicated. It is very complicated. And there is the uh, the result of the uh, incident on the first lap for Mario Dominguez. Clearly a puncture there. Got through the sidewall at the time. So clearly he made uh, some fairly solid contact with something there is Mario Dominguez he is still on the lead lap but he is in last position here is Sebastian Bourdais and right behind him you'll see there is Paul Tracy right in front of him so it's now down to the pit crews Ronnie and Tracy is very very good on these stop if you notice now he'll probably start as soon as the others are he's, he's see there he beat Sebastian there Ooh, look at that side by side Oy, the wing is off Tracy he took the wing on wow then look at that he's locked him up going inside Tracy this He's stuff. punctured. Sebastian Bode has a puncture and uh, Paul Tracy has the wing off. So, they, we thought they were going to make, maybe make contact on the first lap. It didn't happen then, but it has happened now. The Tracy and uh, Bordet make contact coming out of the pits. And it will fall into Serbia at the moment because he got to uh, Justin Wilson, you know, so it, it's... So you can see the right rear tyre is flat on Sebastian Bourdais' car. He's got to fight that car around. He's got to make sure he doesn't damage that suspension. He can't afford to go too fast with that tyre flapping around. It's in danger now of, uh, of falling apart is that rear tyre. Yeah, it's not a good situation. But to be honest, I think Sebastian made a wrong move there because they were side by side. Our Tracy was actually a little bit in front of him. He went off the pit lane speed limit a little bit too early to get the jump in front and then he, because he didn't want to cross the yellow line, he turned in on Tracy. So to be honest, I think it was Sebastian but it's uh, wrong call. But I mean, Tracy, he was the lucky one here because he doesn't lose that much time. But he no, stays but out for some reason and hope there will be a yellow. That, that, well, yeah, but if there is a yellow, he can't come in when the pits are closed. Why wouldn't he come in then? Because now everyone will bunch up, so it will be better for him to no, do it. Well, would it? Because at least now he's got a big lead over everybody else, so now he could come into the pits, change that front wing and get back out again. If it goes full course portion, the pits will not be opened until everybody packs up, so then he will be at the front, but when he comes out then, he'll be right at the back of the pack. 
In in one way, yeah, but the the problem is as well, you know, yeah, may, maybe your ride is a diff difficult one, or maybe they just want to stay out because they think the car maybe not too bad. <laughs> maybe he doesn't realize that hole in that left front corner. I'm sure we're going to get a replay of those. And there is that uh, that front wing from Paul Tracy. It's off the racing line. I suppose you could argue it's not in a dangerous location, but here we go. Paul Tracy gets the jump on Bordet. You can see they're coming out to the pit lane exit. Nobody's doing anything wrong there. See, Tracy um, can, he will hit the wall if he was turning more, so, and Sebastian probably thought he was in front of him, so it kind of a being a race situation, I think. <laughs> and did he go over, he's on board with Paul Tracy, you can see, watch the crew celebrate as they see him get out in front, but there is uh, Sebastian Bourdais making a run around the outside, and there goes the wing, and uh, does, uh, does Bourdais stray across that yellow line? You he could does, see yellow line down there, couldn't you? But he has a, pain, a puncher there, so he might get a penalty. Uh, <laughs> but Tracy definitely knows he lost. Look at that, you see Bourdais wave his fist at Paul Tracy. Why is he waving the fist at Paul Tracy? Because, because him that cut across and hit Tracy. Yeah, but like I said, from, for him inside, he probably thought he was in front of him. And, uh, in front of him, and then he thinks that, OK, I was in front, so I should have my line, and Tracy should uh, lift off. But uh, Another very strong run this afternoon for AJ Allmendinger. Both uh, he and his teammate Justin Wilson, they really struggled with those cars on Friday. I was watching out in turns 8 and turns 9, and they had massive oversteer in those cars. Those cars were sliding around all over the place, but uh, they've uh, really settled those cars down, and, uh, and uh, they've uh, made big improvements. And Justin Wilson qualified, of course, on the second row of the grid. AJ didn't qualify. There's uh, Cristiano de Matter has claimed that hit the wall, and Paul Tracy, uh, his crew, is waiting for him to make a pit stop, and the yellows are out. That's cru cruel timing for Paul Tracy. There is uh, that's uh, Ricardo Sperafico in the Dale Point racing car. I believe he had uh, got together with the the matter on that corner. The matter. I don't think he had made a pit stop. Here's PT. He's actually pitting PT, so yes. maybe he will get a penalty. What Serbia is that all in as well. Yeah, but Serbia over. Oh, they're not on the pit. No, no, they're, they're on the front. No, no, he's waiting because he pits and then he is allowed to go in front of him afterwards. But he actually went in front, eyes out of fuel. Kidding. I believe he's out of fuel. He's out of fuel. What a disaster for Paul Tracy. So uh, he last pitted on lap 34. What do you need to do? Just wait for a tow or what? Yeah, just wait there while we figure it out, Paul. That's Neil Mitchell again on the radio with Paul Tracy. You can hear the frustration yeah, in Paul. they're going to come and tow you. They're going to come and tow you, he says. And uh, you can see there's a uh, champ car safety, a champ car official walking uh, very slowly down pit lane, uh, about uh, 50 yards behind him. Uh, but uh, what a disappointment for Paul Tracy. You know, that pit stop, the last pit stop was very slow. Here he comes. He was supposed to pit. Uh, he was told to pit by his crew, but he saw that the pits were closed, we believe, so he decided not to come onto pit lane, did Paul Tracy. There he is, trying to get across lane, trying to make up his mind whether to come in, decides not to, or... But in that case, you know, he knows he's running out of fuel because he will have the alarm button on when he's running out of fuel afterwards, so he should have got in. It's a difficult call, but he should have got in. Yeah, and uh, what a disappointment. He's out of the car, as you can see, and he's uh, getting the cheers of the crowd. So I guess Sevier is having a good weekend at the moment. He certainly is. So Oriol Sevier now is in the lead of the motor race, and just a, a huge amount of excitement going on here. The, the crowd, of course, bitterly disappointed. You can hear the reception that Paul Tracy is getting, and uh, what a disappointment for him. Uh, yeah, there goes Bourdais down, looks down the inside again. No, not quite close enough there. And discretion, the better part of Bala for Sebastian Bourdais. Bourdais was using the push to pass on Lakeshore Boulevard that time around. Bourdais now just has two seconds worth left. It was interesting to note they have 24, uh, they have 30 seconds, uh, 60 seconds of usage for the whole race. But once you press the button, then uh, the system remains engaged until you lift off. So even though Bourdais only has two seconds worth left, he effectively has uh, the whole length of Lake, Lakeshore Boulevard, which is about 14 or 15 seconds, in order to use that one more time. He has 14 seconds left uh, if he can keep it all the way long. So it, it's all about timing it right, you know. You have it on the display, you have it. Uh, as soon as you see it goes down to two seconds, you just lift off for a couple moment and then you get back on. So you get, in in some way, you get 13 seconds for free. That's right. So he's got one more opportunity as Sebastian Bordeaux. But here's the battle for the lead there. Oriol Serbia and Justin Wilson. And again, down the inside. There goes Justin Wilson to Britain. Down to the inside. Is he able to hold it tight enough at the apex of the corner? He is. Justin Wilson is our new race leader. There is Carl Russo. 
<laughs> is he excited or what? The team owner of Rouge Sport, Carl Russo, he raced himself in the Tour Atlantic Championship two or three years ago. And uh, he's really just, he wasn't really being a serious racing driver at that stage. He just wanted to see whether or not he wanted to run a full-time, big-time racing team. He had a lot of fun. He decided he did. He hired AJ Olmendinger and Aaron Justice to drive a pair of Toyota Atlantic cars two years ago. And uh, uh, Olmendinger dominated the championship. And uh, this is, uh, he's uh, moved up now into the champ cars. And here is his teammate, Justin Wilson. Duck into the inside of Oriol Serbia. And Serbia did not make that easy at all, Ronnie Bremer. But Justin Wilson had uh, had what it takes to get down the inside and make the pass. Yeah, Justin knows he's quicker than Oriol, so he needs to do it. And look at Russo here. And they they really deserve this win. I mean, they've been so close this year. I mean, unfortunately, not to have the win. He worked so hard this season, and he's been so close a couple of occasions. And then finally now he gets his chance. And yeah. Well done to Justin. Yeah, it's the 20th race for Roosport. It is the 20th race also for Justin Wilson. And there is the hand is raised and victory number one for Justin Wilson. What a thrill for him. He's uh, just done a great job. The Roosport team, there's Steve Wolf on the wall there. He's the team manager. Uh, it's a great organization. And uh, there's not a whole lot of champ car experience among that team. He's, uh, he's brought the team up from Toyota Atlantic, did Carl Russo. He's, uh, Justin's going to let the team go past and uh, celebrate with the traditional donut celebration. Let's uh, see if he can beat Tracy on this one. I doubt <laughs> it, but still, let's see how he does on this perfect team. No, he's actually pretty good, but Tracy is definitely the king to do this one. I'll tell you what, for somebody who hasn't done victory donuts in a long time, that was a, a sensational effort there by Justin Wilson. I think even PT, certainly Alex Zanardi will be proud of that. And great for, for the Roosport team, for CDW, come on board this weekend. Their first time out, and look at that. That's pretty tight donuts for Justin Wilson. Tremendous effort, he's done everything right. Even the donuts were right for Justin Wilson. And there he is celebrating in time-honored style. It's been a long time coming. Congratulations. Thanks very much. It kind of seems hard to believe, you know, those last few laps under the caution are... I was just so hoping it wouldn't go back to, uh, to green. You know, I just wanted to get this first one under my belt and then can go from there. This is definitely a race that you earned. It wasn't that people, some people fell out, certainly, but you forced your way to the front. Got to be very gratifying. Yeah, over the moon. The, the team has done a great job. Uh, you know, we, we weren't very quick early on. We were just hanging on to the, the back of the guys in front. And then, uh, you know, when the, all the accidents start to happen, we just kept moving up and the car got better and better as the, the track ripped up. So I'm very pleased with Roosport and... It's great to have CDW on board as well for this event. Now, I know many years ago, you sold yourself on the stock exchange, 1.5 million shares. Some of the shareholders are here, hoping that you would be paying a dividend for your company. I have a feeling the dividend's on the way. Well, hopefully, hope so. Uh, you know, this is the perfect way, uh, trying to win races, and it's good to have those supporters here, and it's, it's great to have the family here as well. He has a lot of supporters on both sides of the Atlantic. Congratulations. Fantastic victory. Thanks very much. It's a squeeze for Justin Wilson, but look, he's head and shoulders above Tagliani in Oriol Serbia, and he was head and shoulders above everybody today. Thanks for joining us for Toronto. We'll see you next week in Edmonton. Edmonton may seem like a sleepy Canadian town to some, but to those who know, Edmonton embraces one of the richest sports traditions in the world. Hoping to make some history of their own, 18 drivers from seven different countries pull into the city of champions for the first time. They bring with them one question only. Do you feel it? 800 horsepower. Do you feel it? Turbocharged V8 engines. Do you feel it? 240 miles per hour. Do you feel it? Edmonton, do you feel it?
brand new event here in Edmonton, just a huge amount of enthusiasm, big crowds, we had 55,000 people here on Friday, 66,000 people here on Saturday, and today is an absolute sellout. The man who's uh, setting the pace this weekend, though, is AJ Omedy, your first ever pole position, you've got to be excited for the race, AJ. Ah, uh, for sure, I mean, it's, uh, it's been a great team effort so far this weekend, a uh, big thing we were trying to work on all year was the fact that uh, we usually fi finish with a good car, but it, we don't usually start with one. So uh, we're starting up front this weekend, Roosport, great job so far, Western Union, Red Bull as always. So, uh, but the, uh, the important thing is to finish it off right now. Paul, he's, he's a hard racer. He stays where he is and just that tends to lead to contacts. He obviously has a problem with accepting any blame for any situation. Day took the position. Paul tried to get it back and got into the back of him. Bad, bad I ran into the back of him. I tracked him down in the pit later on and I said, hey, I'm sorry. I have nothing to say. It's just the way it is. It's just stupid. After Miami, when he took me out, you know, just dead straight, I didn't give him back. And I had shots at taking him out. I didn't do it just because it's not the essence of racing. Sebastian Bourdais. Paul Tracy took out Bourdais a couple of weeks ago in Miami, but this time that was just criminal. He was playing games on the start, trying to let Bruno get a jump start on everybody. We're going into the corner and he just ran into the back of my car and he's pointing the finger at me like saying, I'm stupid, I was trying to take myself out of the championship. We're both fast and both, you know, obviously a great contenders and we just end up fighting for the same positions all the time. Oh, here comes Bourdais, trying to get by Tracy on the inside, he may have it. Oh, they touched that. The car is only going to turn so much. If that's what he claims, I'd like to see the steering trays. Paul is moving a bit to the left, so that's moving me all the way to the left of the, of the, of the track. The corner was, was his, you know, all he had to do was get around the corner. If he stays there, obviously, we're going to make contact. He just cut across in front of me and ran over my, my front wheel. He didn't give me enough room. I hit him according to, to his, uh, his logic on things. Unbelievable! Gotta keep them separated. Paul Tracy versus Sebastian Bourdais. Sebastian got here first, but Paul Tracy, I bet, is going to try and make a quick stop. Paul Tracy beats him out! Oh, no, he doesn't! Knocks part of a wing off Tracy's car! You can go two wheels over the yellow line. So I had to leave two wheels under the yellow line. That's not that's not what he wanted to do. I really thought I was clear and he was still kind of there with his front wing. He just cut across in front of my car. It's just unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. We used to have a pretty good relationship. It's been kind of really rubbish by, you know, the media. I wouldn't venture into France and, and go in, into his hometown and, and badmouth him in every newspaper. You just need to put all of that aside, I guess. If he doesn't want to be friendly, that's that's fine with me. I mean, I don't have any problem with it. Paul Tracy and uh, and Sebastian Bourdais, they've been the on-track clashes already this season. But the man this weekend so far is AJ Olmeninger, his first ever Bridgestone Pole Award alongside him. Justin Wilson, he claimed his first victory in this series just one week ago in Toronto, back on road two of the grid. Paul Tracy, he's the only driver to have qualified among the top six in every race this season. Oriel Servia, another strong run for Newman Haas. Cristiano De Matter already won one race this season. Alex Tagliani alongside for Team Australia. Back on road four, Jimmy Vassa looking for another strong result for the PKB racing team and Mario Dominguez, all sorts of incidents the last few weekends Timo Glock, his first top 10 qualifying since the first race of the season in Long Beach alongside him, yes, Sebastian Bourdais he crashed on Friday in qualifying start back on row 5, row 6 Bjorn Wertheim and Nelson Philippe the youngster again doing well Ricardo Sperifico for Dale Coyne Racing matching his career best start in the champ cars and Ryan Hunter Ray alongside him row 8, Andrew Ranger and Ronnie Bremer this week weekend becomes a sixth different driver of the American medical response car of Dale Coyne Racing this season. The final row of the grid, Alex Perifico and Marcus Marshall.
There is the green flag and AJ Omni, his first ever pole position. He makes a great start. And look at that. Paul Tracy down to the inside. Immediately trying to get around Justin Ross. But just in there, bravely around the outside. He goes side by side up to turn two. It's single file through turn two. And yes, Justin Wilson has to see that line. And it is PT that gets the advantage going down this very technical part of the racetrack, Jonathan Palmer. Yes, it's very quick at that point too. Fourth gear in the in those corners three and four. Justin's up the inside of Tracy. Lovely manoeuvre from Justin Wilson. Look what he's got away with it. It's very, very tight. These are two very tough drivers. Well, Paul Tracy's put it back. I'm surprised about that. Great racing in the early stages here. There's Justin really a great lunch in the inside. He was clean. The great thing about that pass manoeuvre, Jonathan Palmer, they each gave each other room. Yes, and I don't think uh, there was any question of the uh, push to pass or the overboost uh, coming into play there. That was just a quick dive up the inside by Justin. Of course, they're not allowed tyre warmers in this, so they'll be still a little bit slow on lap time and perhaps lap two or three before these tyres get fully up to speed. That's very true indeed. And there was Alex Tagliani with Oriol Serbia making a move down to the inside into turn ten, so already all sorts of action at the front of the field. This is AJ Allmendinger with a good lead at the end of the first lap ahead of Paul Tracy, Justin Wilson in third, Oriol Serbia fourth, uh, Alex Tagliani in fifth behind Tagliani, Cristiano D'Amato, then J Jimmy Vassa, Mario Dominguez, Sebastian Bourdais up into eighth place, who's already made a couple of passes. He has all, also already used 12 seconds of his uh, Cosworth push to pass uh, button. They have 60 seconds of usage during the race. Here's a problem. The first guy into the pits, Andrew Ranger, who's complaining on the uh, on the pace lap of some problems with that car. They're going to change tyres in any case, but I think it looks like it might be a bit more terminal, Jonathan. Well, he was locking the uh, the right-hand front, so it looks like others a rear suspension breakage on perhaps on one on the corner or a puncture. But certainly the right front looked uh, looked to be light. But a great start there, of course, from Alman Dinger. I'd like a shame I didn't see we didn't see quite how Tracy got back after Wilson got ahead into what must have been about uh, the right-hander of turn seven, I think it was. Um, meanwhile, well, I think clearly there is more of a problem here than just simply changing the tyres. Here's Justin Wilson looking to the inside. There he goes. Great manoeuvre by Justin Wilson. Tremendous move down into turn 11. Again, Paul Tracy just locking up that brake slightly and Justin Wilson there to take advantage, Jonathan Palmer. Yeah, I think Justin knew, as I said, Justin knew that Paul was weak there. He knew that Paul had a problem and he was lined himself up really well and AJ's going to have a go as well, but I can't see for all. Whoa, that's oh. going to slow them both down. That's going to lose them both probably half a second on Justin. But through that turn 10, Justin was right on the back of Tracy. He knew he was weak into turn 11. He set himself up to capitalise on it. And he's doing it again. Yeah, he's, he misses Apex there too. Tracy really is losing out. And uh, uh, he's obviously got some problem. I don't know. He's just putting a bit of braking on the rear on the face of it. You say, Joe, he just needs to... Um, he's obviously locking fronts a great deal, surprisingly so. You don't normally see this amount of locking up at the front. Well, you know, once you, once you flat spot a tire, it's going to start doing it more and more throughout the run, so that's probably what's happening. No, I can't help you on that, but uh, as I said, the other... <laughs> I'll go back to my previous point, and that was Verdheim, was actually. Here's a form of... Oh, Whoa. that was Justin Wilson. I don't believe it. Justin has lost it under caution and is going to fall to the back of the pack. So we're going to get ready to go green this time around. AJ Ominger brings the field through the turn 13 and 14 chicane in second place now. Because of Justin Wilson's mistake is Sebastian Bourdais. Oriol Serbia looking good for yet another podium for Newman House Racing. That's a remarkable record that he is he's building there for that team. So once again, we see uh, one of the new that was one of the poor sized cars was Paul Tracy again taking a slightly defensive line perhaps and Mario Dominguez doing the same behind him. Dominguez trying to fend off the attention of Ronnie Bremer, but here come the ones, one, two, three, four, five cars, that's Timo Glock in fifth place, there is the second of the blue cars, driven by Mario Dominguez, and then Ronnie Bremer, and then all the lapped cars behind them, so I didn't think there was a rule to, to put all the lapped cars ahead of everybody else, but that's what those drive through, uh, drive through the pit lanes must have been all about, so the, the field is now lined up in race order, there goes Justin Wilson diving to the inside, we're hearing that AJ Ominiger might have a flat tyre, that is word is coming from the pits, and there goes AJ, he is, he's off the road, a disaster for Roosport, again, just, jeepers, there's, uh, there's Nelson Philippe also running in, into the escape road in turn 12, the carousel turn, so it's all turned sour for the Roosport team, they were looking good in first and second, we saw Justin Wilson spin on the yellow, now AJ has been off under green, and here he comes on to pit lane, 
and we're hearing it might be the uh, right rear tyre. I don't know, the right rear looks no. okay, but there's certainly, we hear this, uh, we're, the, the left side wheels certainly look fine to come past us. The right side wheels don't look too bad either, but it's a disaster for AJ Omenick. Yeah, maybe he picked, looks like the left rear to me. Uh, He's trying to find out. He's weaving the car around, isn't he? Yeah, coming to pit. It's coming oh, very no, slowly. What? Oh, maybe no. Maybe it is the right. They're looking at the rear. He's getting out of it, aren't he? Yeah, he's, he's getting out of it. He's well. Maybe if he is a no, maybe it's not it's a wheel. Not a, you know, no. I think maybe it's suspension because I, you know, he, however upset he'd be, he wouldn't be getting out of it. What um, a shame. Wow. The youngster had just done an excellent job this afternoon, and now it's Newman House Racing 1 2, just like the old days, with Forsyth Racing in third place and Paul Tracy and Timo Glock, an absolutely brilliant fourth for a Rocket Sports team. But it's all about this man now, isn't it? Sebastian Bourdais. He looked completely out of it in the middle stages of the race. He was stuck behind Tagliani, forced to save fuel. He uh, stretched his fuel load in the middle stint, and I was questioning the wisdom of that, but I'll tell you what it's come back uh, to work in his favor because he was able to turn a long middle stint of the race he made his final pits of a lot later than everybody else uh, and uh, because of that uh, he was able to turn some reasonably quick laps on hot tires make his final pit stop and get out of the way here's a replay again of AJ Omeningham we hear the car was stuck in gear he's, he's gonna hit the wall heavily no. Well, we can see it. It's obviously very Ouch. obvious now. I mean, that, that is a bad mistake from AJ. I mean, I mean what, a, what a shame for both these drivers. I mean, this is exactly really what happened at Toronto. He can't he believe it. He's absolutely devastated. He knows that he's made the same mistake as he did at Toronto on his own. Um, just, uh, you know, he hit the curb on the inside of that, threw the car, um, and he just kept in it too much. Whether he could have, whether he could have saved it if he lifted off, I think he probably could. Uh, what a great shame for this man. He is talented, but it's oh, just boy. a couple of mistakes. But then I'm afraid you know, Wilson's done the same thing, and he's going to be kicking himself because he could have been leading this race. And here he is, one, two, three, four. Sebastian Bourdais, Oriol Servia, Paul Tracy in third place, and Justin Wilson in fourth. And this is a battle for the front with, with within a mile to the finish line. Just three more corners into turn ten. Again, Paul Tracy, he's, uh, he's not blocking there. It's a good clean line through the corner, but this is the last opportunity for Justin Wilson. No, he's not, not going to do it. He's not close enough. What a shame. His podium would have been fantastic unless something goes badly wrong, but no. I'll tell you what, though, after having made a mistake, he just needs to bring it home and get as many points as he can. He can't afford a DNF, that is for sure, but Sebastian Bourdais, he's going to win the motor race. This is going to be a great day for Sebastian Bourdais, no question about that. This is win number 12 for Sebastian Bourdais in his third champ car season, and a great result for him. He started in 10th place. He's done uh, everything right. He lost ground during a pit stop in the middle of the race. Listen to the crowd. Sebastian Bourdais, come on out here and greet these fans. Started 10th today, an awesome run. Sebastian, you had some help, but starting 10th, I don't think you expected to be here in victory lane. Uh, no, I, was, I would have been pretty happy with the top five, but uh, we passed a lot of cars. The McDonald's car was awesome at the beginning, and you know I was just hanging in there, trying not to make any mistakes, which we did. Then save fuel, went went hard when we needed to, uh, passed again people, and it was just you know an unbelievable race. And at the end, they all made mistakes. I don't know, maybe they were tired or the restart was really slick, but. What a race. I, I, just, I just can't qualify this one. Number one, that's Sebastian Bourdais. He comes here to San Jose for the second event in a row, a brand new event. Just a lot of enthusiasm here, right in downtown San Jose. It's the third largest city in California. This, uh, the state itself is it was the first state capital was here in San Jose back in the 1800s. There's been a huge amount of enthusiasm, a massive amount of work here, yeah, railroad tracks. This track goes across the railroads in two different locations. That's caused all sorts of problems over the weekend the drivers have worked with the champ car officials to try and make this track workable it's uh, it's very very bumpy but there's just a huge crowd on hand there were over 40,000 people here on Friday 50,000 yesterday and just a tremendous amount of enthusiasm and the weather well it couldn't be better 81 degrees relatively low humidity it's going to be sunny all day long here they have 300 days of sunshine here in San Jose and this is one of these after you've been like this all week weekend long coming into San Jose halfway through the 2005 Champ Car World Series Sebastian Bourdais holds what is now a 22 point advantage over Paul Tracy Justin Wilson from England in third place Oriol Servia moving up well
well, having uh, sat in, taken over the uh, Pacific Air car of Newman House Racing, previously driven by Bruno Jacquiera. Andrew Ranger, the young rookie, is only uh, about uh, 15 points out of first place. Timo Glock is the best of the Rushy, Rush French rookie contenders this year, but a lot of guys knocking on the door. For the second race in a row, a brand new event here in San Jose. Good news and bad news for me this weekend. The good news is we've got Bruno Junquero with me. The bad news is we've got Bruno Junquero with me. Bruno, you're injured in Indianapolis. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm getting better every day, doing a lot of physiotherapy. And I'm feeling much, much better. And um, I'm anxious to get back in the car. Here we are. Oh, it's going to be a single file start. The green flag is out. The race is underway, Bruno Junquero. Yeah, look how much the cars have jumped. That Justin Wilson's car was just all over the place. All of the cars, fucking Broncos through there. There's that tight chicane at turn, turn this is the, the hairpin at turn three. And uh, Sebastian Bourdais made a nice clean start and has got himself out front. I was going to say, yeah. uh, the two, it's one of the Dale Coin cars, I think maybe oh. both Dale Coin cars, isn't it? There's Ronnie Bremer on the inside of us and Ricardo Sperafica on the outside and they both apparently stalled the engines. Yeah, that's a very tight corner, so if you miss the apex, you don't do the corner. A clean start, not a crash, but I think they start more like a single file. So at least we got everybody around it. Here's a replay there. We saw that, uh, I think it was Cristiano de Mata there, was sort of tucked up to the inside, and uh, Alex Tagliani maybe got bumped him, and then behind him, the two Dale coin cars, really nowhere to go, and they end up uh, the odd men out. At the, uh, on the outside of the racetrack but here's another view again of the start coming through over the uh, look at the fucking Broncos over the railroad tracks there in turn one the chicane they're going there at about 150 miles an hour incredible yeah, that's something that unique I never saw that in a racing I don't track. think we want to see it again no. do we it's Sebastian Bourdais was looking at uh, yet another victory this is just his 40th champ car start he, earlier in the weekend yesterday earned his 16th Remarkable statistics, 16 holes in just 40 starts. That's way better than anybody else in the history of champ car racing. And looking now at win number 13, just one corner to go for Sebastian Bourdais. He's finished in the top six in every race this season. He's completed all but one lap. And there he goes, win number 13 for Sebastian Bourdais. An excellent drive this afternoon. A thoroughly well-deserved victory for the French. There goes that battle for third, fourth and fifth. Paul Tracy takes second place. Oriol Serbia hangs on for third. And uh, in fourth place will be Justin Wilson ahead of Mario Ramirez. Timo Glock. Work so late both nights this week. That paid off and I appreciate it. Thanks for all the hard work. Donut time. Well, that's the one aspect of his driving this year has left it, something to be desired, the donuts. But look, there's not much room down there. That actually was a pretty good effort. Yeah. I think you had a car that held together on a very rough racetrack. Was that the key? Yeah, I think it was definitely the key. The key was also to start up front and stay up front. And, and we made it happen. And I'm uh, so very happy for these guys at uh, Newman House. They completely put the car in pieces and rebuilt it in the night. And uh, that paid off. The thing stayed together the whole day. And that's, uh, that's great for the McDonald's crew. Thanks for joining us here in San Jose. My thanks to Bruno Junquiera for joining me this afternoon. We're going to be back in action again in two weeks' time in Denver. This is Jeremy Shaw saying goodbye for now. rivalry and a neck-and-neck -neck battle for the points title. Tracy and Bourdais are clearly in command, but with four consecutive podium finishes, Oriol Servia is closer to his first win than ever. Could this be Oriol's day? Whose luck will win out in the Mile High City?
There is the green flag and Sebastian Bordet on our right, Paul Tracy on the left and Mario Dominguez made an appalling start. There is Justin Wilson in the middle and I think, ooh, he's going to get here. There that is. I think that was Cristiano D'Amato coming flying down the inside. Both PKB cars are involved there. Poor old Justin Wilson, he tried to do the right thing there. He realised he was a meat in the sandwich and he tried to back out of it, but unfortunately he got run over by the rest of the field. Look at that, AJ Olmening has made a fantastic start to go from fourth to second Mario Harperfeld. Yeah, I think Bordet was a bit cautious here because last year he suffered here and went to last. Justin, as you said, he did the right thing. He, he saw the confusion starting to happen on the first corner. He backed out of it, but maybe it's a bit too much and Cristiano caught him. And now we have three or four cars out of the race already. There's Alex Sagliani also in big, big deep trouble there. A, a wheel hanging off that car. Looks like his day is done. There's both of the PKV cars are still. That is Jimmy Vassa. There is his teammate Cristiano the matter already out. But here's again a, a replay of that part. You can see Bourdais diving down the inside. And with that decreasing decreasing radius corner, Mario Arbevald, it's very tricky. Yeah, that's a very slippery corner. You can see there he goes from asphalt to concrete and back to asphalt. So you have quite a lot of grip right there where they are in the asphalt. Then suddenly when Bourdais braked and he runs into the concrete part there, his car runs wide and AJ is able to to come back earlier on power. Great racing there for the second and third positions in the early stages. We've got eight laps in the books and the quickest lap so far has been set by Sebastian Bourdais. And once again there, AJ Armadinga locking up those brakes a little bit into turn one. Here's a look back to Cleveland. This is in, in, in the practice, qualifying actually in quick Cleveland when AJ hit the wall there in a heavy concussion. He came back from that and here we are in Toronto. We talked about the instance he's had. This is right in the closing stages of the race. And you can see he's hit there by Mario Dominguez. Absolutely nowhere to go after a good drive by both of those two. Then on to Edmonton the very following week and, and AJ leading the race in the closing stages. And he's uh, absolutely, he's just inconsolable he was after that race. And then here we are again two weeks ago in San Jose, the very early stage of the race. Boom again, the Roo Sport car is in the wall and uh, he was uh, he was just beside himself and he even glanced the wall there yesterday. That was in qualifying yesterday, right on the limit. And that's the great thing about AJ. He's, uh, you know, he's not afraid to push that car to the limits. Burdett trying again. Yeah, this time he was going to hold on because AJ yeah, ran. He broke too late as well, didn't he? And there goes Mario Dominguez taking full advantage of that slip by, by AJ Omening. So Bordet now is through into second place. Dominguez into third place. And AJ all of a sudden back to fourth place. And uh, I think let's have a look at Jan Bordet. I'd like to follow him around if we could because I think he's really struggling with that car compared to just a handful of laps ago. He's now falling from second to fourth in one swell foot there down in turn nine. And the white flag is out for the race leader Sebastian Bourdais. Then down the inside is Mario. Ooh, and there goes uh, Andrew Ranger, gets out of the way, and here they are battling back and forth. The second and third side by side, they go across the line. Mario Dominguez has the inside line for turn one. And there's Marcus Marshall doing a great job of getting well out of the way. And the pass is completed by Mario Dominguez. Over the last two or three years, he's passed uh, more than anybody, arguably, perhaps, than uh, Sebastian Bourdais. A great drive there, and a great pass by Mario Dominguez. That was Carl Russo looking uh, from the Roosport team standings in the pit lane. And Dominguez redeemed himself. I mean, he went out of the track there in turn four, um, but he was going to finish second anyway. He, he went down to fourth place, managed to come back to second, and at the end of the day, just made the racing more exciting for us. With a, with a textbook pass, and he had been using the uh, push to pass on that court, on that uh, straightaway. He made full use of it, dived to the inside under braking. But this is it's all about Sebastian Bourdais this afternoon. Paul Tracy, he made the mistake, he crashed out of the race, and there is the McDonald's team celebrating once again. The fourth time this year, the third in a row for Sebastian Bourdais, and once again he does a croissant down in turn one. I don't know if we had the golden horseshoe today, but definitely uh, PT did his own damage, you know, and uh, he was running really hard the whole race, and unfortunately after the start when uh, he kind of pushed me wide, uh, he went wide himself and really not, didn't give me very much room, nothing, uh, nothing, you know, bad, but just uh, I had to give a position to AJ, and I knew it was really going to be difficult to pass him. It took me a while to get it done, and, uh, you know, by that time he was already uh, eight or nine seconds ahead on the road, so... From there on, you know, we, we worked really hard, tried to save a bit of fuel, but uh, we are matching his speed, but not really much better. So there was really no hope and uh, kept running hard. I kept running hard and he made a mistake, we won the race. It's really fantastic for the Magnolia car.
from Canada, it's the Molson Champ Car Grand Prix of Montreal as Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series, powered by Ford. Just 23 years of age, Timo, from Lohn in Germany originally, came up through the ranks in Europe. He was the Formula BMW Junior Champion in the year 2000. The following year, he won the Senior Formula BMW Championship. He then moved into German Formula 3. He was fifth in the European Championship in 2003. And then last year, got that break in Formula 1. He was initially a test driver. And when Giorgio Pantano had some problems with his contract, and then Timo Glock made his debut with the Jordan team right here on the circuit, Gilles Verneur in Canada. Of the top six cars, the fastest man at the moment is in fact Bourdais, not surprisingly. 122.8 on the last lap for him. But the lead guys are all locked in the low 23. So Glock, Serbia and Wilson, all 23-1. So certainly Sebastian's got about two or three tenths on them, but it's not enough at the moment to be able to make a big leap and just jump on top of that pack. He needs another couple of tenths before he can actually do much about these guys. Yeah, and what's interesting now is that Timo Glock and Oriol Serbia, Timo has used all his push to pass, so he's clearly used up that one. So that is the radio call there to Justin Ross. You have 13 seconds left on your power to Cosworth power to pass button, and the call from the pits will allow give you two pushes worth in order to make that part those passes that he needs to make to to rest the lead from his current third position. And for much of the race, Bourdais has been carrying 60 odd seconds of push to pass left. On this very last lap, he's burned off a heap of that, about 50 seconds. He's got 13 seconds left now. So Timo Glock has used all his push to pass. Oriol Serbia has six seconds left. Sir Wilson and Bourdais in third and fourth both have 13 seconds left to use. The next couple of cars are Tagliani and Damara, and they've both got 26 and 27 seconds respectively. Jimmy Vassar in seventh place has a whole half a minute to get to use. And impressively, Timo opened the margin, another fraction again on the last lap. He actually pinched another tenth of a second. Of course, it'll fluctuate from corner to corner, but the official margin at the control line, 0.555 for Glock to Serbia. The car would be a little lighter, but he, as you said before, he's driving beautifully. 1 minute 23.084 the last time around for Timo Glock. Here he comes down again now on the fastest part of the course. Over 180 miles now, hard on the brakes here down to second gear for the chicane. And he comes out of it now and he accelerates up to about 150 miles an hour across the start finish line. 1 minute 23, 22.858. His fastest lap of the race thus far for Timo Glock. 22.858. So uh, Oriol Serbia just a tad quicker, 22.7 but a, uh, a good lap there by Timo. He is doing a magnificent job. There is Paul Genelosi watching in the pit lane. One of the co-owners of the Champ Car Series, and he'd have his fingers crossed privately at the moment. Six championships that uh, team has won in the Trans Am Series and 57 races uh, as a result of, of, uh, of Klaus Graf's victory yesterday in the final round of the 2005 championships but uh, only one victory in the champ cars for the Rocket Sports team. That's courtesy of Alex Tagliani finally one year ago at Road America. And that margin between Wilson and Bourdais beginning to close up a little again, although it looks as though Sebastian's got strength at certain ends of the circuit, but then it actually opens up again at the other end. So when they're at the northernmost end of the circuit, Sebastian looks pretty competitive, but then he's losing a few spots around here at the moment. Go get him. Go get him. Here comes Oriol Serbia. Down to the inside. Side by side. And once again, Glock has to take the evasive move off to the left and run down the inside. Look at Paul Gentleman. He can't watch. There is the brain trust that Newman has racing. Carl has, Bernie has his wife, and Paul Newman there. They can hardly watch either. Great stuff. So absolutely wheel to wheel. And we're go. again going into the final corner. And I don't believe that Timo had much of an option. If he stays there, it's going to be contact. So he's moving to the left to preserve his own car, his own position, and really save Oriol from himself. Yeah, he is, though, because Oriol, you know, he's not... Uh, again, race control is reviewing that move, but I saw that move exactly the same as the previous encounter, what, three, four or five laps ago. And, 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 you know, as I said earlier on, Tony Cotman, the race director, has always said he doesn't want to ruin anybody's day. And uh, Timo Glock is driving brilliantly out in front with a car that clearly, for the balance of the weekend, has not been up to the pace of the leaders. He's got himself in the lead. 
yes, by a bit of luck, but but boy, is he doing a sensational job right now. And just cool recap, as a cucumber. Here it is again, and it, uh, it's worth another look. And I really don't think that he, if he stayed there, there's going to be contact. But uh, Tony will have a long, hard look at that one. And Paul Gentilosi didn't like the look of that. <laughs> you know, maybe on that occasion, did Oriol just have his nose in front going into that corner? I'd like another look at that one. He might have done. And if he did have his nose in front, then maybe uh, Newman has, has a gripe there and or Oriol Serbia. But this is a fascinating battle. Two uh, very hungry drivers, both looking for their first ever champ car victory right here in Montreal, a circuit with so much history in Formula One. Three previous races here for the champ cars have all been exciting events, and this one, I reckon, tops the lot. Timo's now opened the margin further. It's 0.767 at the last lap, and he, he's in the 22s. 122.9, 23.4 for Oriol. 22.9 for Justin, 23.0 for Bourdais. The quickest guy, the fastest lap of anybody on that previous lap uh, was... Uh, was in fact Justin Wilson there in third place. There is Justin, the CDW car of the Roo Sport team. I CD, think that, uh, CDW, the technology solutions founded in 1984, new sponsorship. They came on board for the, initially just for the three Canadian races for Justin Wilson, but they were so delighted with their first two outings in Toronto and Edmonton, they also signed up for, uh, for San Jose uh, and Denver. Pretty cool message has just come through from race control. Glock has to let Serbia by. He's been told that Oriol Serbia must go by. So Tony Kotman has reviewed that incident last time and he didn't agree with our view of it. In the previous one, it was okay, but he feels on this occasion that in fact what he's done is straight line it. No, well, I think I think what the distinction is on the previous time, Glock still had his nose in front as they turned into the corner. This time around, it looked to me that maybe Oriol had his nose just ever so slightly out in front and therefore he's deemed to have had the advantage is a tough call for Tony Cotton. Last lap, and the thing is, that's a frame by frame decision. You've got to look at those and study them very, very carefully to be able to fully interpret what's going on, and that's what they're doing in race control. This is the white flag lap. What is Timo Glock going to do? We hear he's been told to let Oriol Serbia by. It's a big move for, for both of these two. If he does let him go, and here he is, maybe he is going to let him go, and now he's going to try not to lose any more position. So, boy, go race him. Go race him, says Paul Gentilosi. There is... <laughs> Rob Hill, that was, that we saw on the radio there to Timo Glock, and uh, go get him, he says. He's now going to... They've, they've both used up all their push to pass. Oh, this is it, contact. the final run. That was contact between Wilson and Glock. Yep. He hit it fairly hard, I think, didn't he? Yep. Is Bourdais going to get a run on Sebastian Bourdais? But Soriel Serbia now is looking good. This, this, this is going to be the place, is it, for Oriol Serbia? Timo Glock is dogging his wheelchair as they come into the final opportunity, the final overtaking chance for Timo Glock. And Oriol Serbia, finally, after all this time, no, good pal, that's okay. is going to get it. that victory. There he goes. Fantastic race. There's a disappointment for Tim, for uh, Paul Genelosi. He clapped his hands there. And what a fabulous motor race. And Oriol Serbia, you know, either of these two guys would have, would have earned the victory. A second place has got to feel like a win for Timo Glock. In the Mojave Desert, the silence of rock and sand can penetrate a man's soul. And when that silence is broken by the thunder... <laughs> turbocharged engine, it must sound like a heartbeat at the dawn of time. I do know a thing or two about this. I grew up racing in the desert. In fact, I won the first champ car race ever held in Las Vegas in 1968. Man, that was a good one. Tonight, you'll see Tracy, Vassar, in four days. Challenge the Mojave Desert alongside a bunch of young talent. At speeds, way in excess of 200 miles an hour. Man, when these guys race around this asphalt track, the desert will come to life. And I should know, I'm Bobby Ensor, and this is Champ Car. And here we are, we're coming up for the green flag and uh, the race is underway. The green, we're waiting, waiting, waiting for the green. They're bringing the cars up to speed. There is the green flag. 
and already four or five wide at the start here, going across the start finish line, absolutely amazing stuff. AJ Ullman, they're going on the outside there, the yellow car, the Intel car for the Roosport team. As you can see them going around the corner, the red light on the back of the car signifies those of rookie drivers. And if it's flashing, that means a push to pass, a different rule for the push to pass this weekend. It's not RPM and boost, it's just only boost, and nobody's really sure how much speed that's actually going to give these no, guys. It's, uh, they, they did practice with the push to pass yesterday in a final practice session, but as you say, Darren Manning, there's a lot of a lot of question marks this afternoon, but that was a great start from AJ Armadier, but now he seems to be slipping back. Also, I, I, a great start by Alex Tagliani, very aggressive on the start there, and also, already you're seeing the uh, the two Newman Haskars pulling away, but Jimmy Vassar uh, trying to breach that gap, and uh, Tag is, uh, looks like he's got a pretty good car after the setup in uh, warm-up. He is, but around the outside there is Tagliani, on the outside of uh, Alex Tagliani is Mario Dominguez, and right behind those two is Paul Tracy, Paul Tracy also making the move from 14th on the grid, look at this, three wide, absolutely three abreast. got to be so careful there, Alex Tagliani on the inside, somebody's got to give way. Looks like it was Dominguez on the middle there, Tagliani and Tracy, very smart move by Mario Dominguez, Aaron Manning. Yeah, I would probably do the same with those two inside of me as well. With 160 slap slacks to go this evening, you can't really win it on the fourth and fifth lap, or third lap as it is right now, but you can certainly lose it. Yeah, already you can see those guys just battling side by side, they're just dropping a little bit behind, and already Jimmy Vass has caught onto the back of the uh, the two lead, two Newman Haskars there, and already challenging Ori around the outside of turn two. Looks like he's got a bit of a good, good drive there to Jimmy, he's on the outside, he will on board in Oriel Serbia, and to his right, yes, there is a note there to Jimmy Vassar. Can he make that pass stick on the outside line? It's a long way around, Darren. Yeah, absolutely, but there's going to be a, the car's going to be a lot freer here, and you can see Oriel getting a good draft off, uh, off his teammate. The guy out front, he doesn't want to be out there for too long because these cars create such a draft, and you can see Oriel just straight up the gearbox of his teammate there. Now, we saw last year when the, when the, the champ cars ran on the Las Vegas Speedway one and a half mile oval that uh, we had a pit window. They had to pit every so many laps, I think it was lap 37 or whatever it was last year. Yes, this year, there's no pit lane rule, so therefore fuel management is even more crucial than before, Darren. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, this is not really what, uh, what Bordet wants. I mean, he's got to do it because he's so fast on that inside line, but uh, he's going to be using a hell of a lot more fuel than the guys behind him who are in his draft. Yeah, now look, look up Paul Tracy is towed up on the back of this Jimmy Vassar on the outside and Paul Tracy tucks in behind him as well and Paul is going to the outside this is amazing Paul really struggled in qualifying three yes, wide <laughs> oh they touched oh they touched oh what a... they've saved it yeah that was that was wow. that was very very aggressive there by Paul Tracy you know he uh, squeezed down he did the same move on Tagliani and Dominguez earlier and uh, nearly got away with it and now it looks like he's going to try for the lead this is very aggressive driving by Tracy around the outside sensational stuff Bjorn Wertheim has got himself up in the top four or five as well he started uh, in fifth place fell back a little bit but has now got himself back up to fourth place right behind this trio there is uh, Bjorn in the Eurosport car Liquid Molly sponsorship on that car as well for the HVM team and Bjorn is really moving up very very well indeed yeah, trying to do the right thing there, I think, uh, was Ryan hunter yep. but uh, it almost bit him again. A good save there, because you can see just how much dust came off that car. Of course, yeah, we're here out yeah, in the, the desert, desert. Yeah, absolutely. and it's been, it's been very windy here this all weekend long, so there's a lot of, you know, very, very fine grit okay, on the now. racetrack. It's and there is Ryan hunter He's kept it under control, but two laps down to the race leaders. Who are in uh, 20, 123 laps down now in Las Vegas in the Hurricane Relief 400. Oh, that's a big spin. spin. That is. That, that looks like Tracy to me. Jeepers. Now I don't know whether that was uh, back marker traffic there. Yeah, that's the blue helmet of Paul Tracy. And he was just uh, just shy of his uh, third and final. You okay there, buddy? That's Neil Mickleride on the radio. Yeah, that hurt. Oh. <laughs> I think that was uh, yeah a painful. Well, are you hurt? Let's listen. No, I don't think so. That's good to hear good from news. PT. Absolutely. Okay. He looked like he screwed what up happened? a lot. What happened? Just lose it or what? No, Sebastian hit me. Sebastian hit me. Wow. That's interesting, isn't it? They were battling for the lead. We'll try and get a view oh. of that. They're going through all the debris there. Boy. They were these running. Yeah, you know, these very, two have been battling close. for the championship, and uh, Paul that was, Tracy. It looked, looked like it was on the back straight. It right. was going into. Uh, into turn three there. Here comes the replay. replay. Look at Bordet this. going up the inside. Tracy kind of closing him down a little bit. They were, both, they were both below the white line though. That was uh, that was serious bizarre, stuff. wasn't it? Yeah. 
That was, uh, that was uh, I want another look at that one to see exactly where they were, but uh, there's no doubt that Bourdais hit the back of Paul Tracy's car, Darren Manning, and uh, at that speed, at that point in the race, that boy. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, oh, well, this is interesting, isn't it? You make it a pit stop now, there's uh, oh, 40 laps to go. You should be able to get to the end from here. Yep. I don't understand why everybody would be pitting at this stage. Because Bourdais has made his pit stop. He's good to go now for yep. the end of the night. He's got just, uh, what, uh, 127, that's 39 laps to go at the end. So he certainly should be able to get to the end from here. And, all, uh, all looked good on Bourdais's car. He had a quick check. Yes, he had a look at that car, but uh, surprised certainly that the other guys didn't come in and take advantage of uh, the, the first part of the yellow coming to make their stop. There's now a whole bunch of other guys are laid out on pit yeah, lane, including they're, all they're, they're all coming uh, in to, to make their pit stop now. Craig, you've had a chance to talk to Sebastian about that incident. What happened? Well, obviously Paul was coming into the pits, but Sebastian doesn't know that. And uh, when Paul backed off to come into the pits, I mean, you're going 200, 201 miles an hour, and, you know, we hit him in the back. And I feel badly about that, but in the driver's meeting, they were very explicit how the, a driver had to indicate that it was his intention to pit. He has to get to the inside and start slowing down. And I think Tracy was planning to get into the pits as fast as he could, and uh, we didn't know it was happening. So, uh, again, I'm really sorry about it. Definitely, I wanted to race him at the end. I really would have preferred that. Um, and I think we're pretty lucky that it looks like our car isn't more badly damaged. I'll have to say, though, I've seen Paul Tracy with a big black mark on the nose of his car plenty of times. Thank you, Craig. Let's get to Chris McClure. Neil Mickelwright didn't hear any of that, but they say down there, Paul checked up. He was coming into the pits. We do know that. And uh, Sebastian whacked him from the back, and he just didn't know he was going to uh, lift. Are you buying that? No, I'm not buying it. I mean, you know, it's up to the guy behind to, you know, to do the passing. I mean, if you if you can't come into the pit lane without being hit by the guy behind you, well, then obviously there's a problem. He's too close or whatever. I mean, clearly, any time that we have a problem with Bourdais, I mean, it's always our fault. I mean, God bless him, he can't, you know, he's perfect. He can't do anything wrong. But, you know, we led all night. He went by us a couple of times. We went by him. Um, you know, we had a car that was just as quick as his, and he ran into the back of us. I mean, you... You can paint it any which way you like, but he ran into the back of us. Thank you. Thanks. I don't. I know you don't condone it, but that's the second time. Jerry Forsythe, right side, Paul Tracy's owner. Please believe me. Please. Please believe me. You can't control your driver. Well, I'm filing the complaint on this one. Well, you didn't see the one in Monterey either. That's what you told me. Well, he's going to get sanctioned. I guarantee you that. We heard you say on the radio you thought you were all right. Apparently, that's the case. Yeah, I mean, I was a bit dazed there. I mean, obviously, I hit the wall, you know, about 190 miles an hour or so. You know, frustrating, you know. I don't know what Bordes was thinking. I was coming in the pits, and they listen to our radio conversations. They know I'm coming in the pits. And, uh... They say they didn't. Well, you know, they listen to our radio, so they can say say all they want, but, you know, they constantly monitor what we're saying on the radio, as we do to them. So they knew I was coming in, and what Bordes was doing under the white line, I don't know. So, you know, it's a hard hit, and, you know, we come out on the short end of the stick again, thanks to Sebastian. Are you struggling to control your anger right now because i tell you what neil micklewright and jerry forsyth have been pretty angry out here yeah, i mean what am i supposed to say i mean you know just keeps he keeps doing the same thing all the time but he seems to get away with it so i guess it's uh you know good for him and, and bad for me so it's just disappointing i'm just i'm just frustrated so you know he didn't have the car to beat us tonight i came from the back to the front in five laps and he didn't have anything for us so, so that was the way he had to beat us and Sebastian Bourdais, two years in a row, but I can already tell by his expression, there's more in his mind than just victory today after that contact with Paul Tracy. Fantastic victory, but I know that we have to ask you first about the contact with Paul Tracy. Well, he was blocking, and how can I know that he's going to back off and go in the pits if he doesn't commit like he's supposed to? In the briefing, we, we were clear about that. 
we had to commit put two wheels underneath the white line to signify to the driver behind us that we are going to pit. He never did that. So I was right behind him, and when he braked, I had no idea he was going to pit on this lap. And, you know, I'm just glad he's all right, but I don't even know how he can be complaining about this one. It's just, I mean, how can I just purposely want to run into this guy at 200 miles an hour? It's just foolish. So it's, you know, I'm just glad this McDonald's car made it through. It was a, a big mystery to me that we survived that incident, but you know what, sometimes you need a bit of luck. Polaris, to enjoy the way out, ATVs and snowmobiles. To dream, the impossible dream. The Champ Car World Series returns to Australia's Gold Coast for a little fun in the sun. In 1996, Jimmy Vassar won here on his way to a series title. Cristiano D'Amata clinched his cup the year after his only Australia win. You can always count on a little drama down under, and today will be no exception. Reigning series champ Sebastian Bourdais has fought hard this season. He returns to Surfer's Paradise, seeking a second champ car title. This could be Sebastian's crowning moment on the coast. The cars are lining up for the Lexmark Indy 300 round 31 trial that this year's Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. There's Oil Serbia and Sebastian Bode side by side. And it looks like Bode has got the jump going into the first corner. Oil Serbia, who's got hit from behind there? Oh, trouble already, trouble already. It's Christian in a matter with the back of Oil Serbia. Looks like he's got carried away. And what are giving Christian in a matter for a man of his experience? And again, and, and he had to watch on that restart. Paul Tracy was up to looking at on the inside from fifth on the grid up to second. I don't know if that's what made them nervous and they, they squeezed each other, but uh, there's also a, a, one of the Foresight call, cars in the wall as well. I don't know if that's Dominguez. Looks like Tracy's leading. Yeah, so, well, that was a disaster. Double day got to help with that. Well ahead in front. Here's a replay of the start. The two Foresight cars are the blue car coming up on the inside. There's Justin Wilson. The red, uh, sorry, it's Cristiano the Manor on the extreme right hand side of the track who just cannoned into the back of Oriol Serbia the yeah. whole sitter. Yeah, and I think the Forsyth car that got cut up and that was just an innocent victim trying to avoid it that got clipped. Cristiano Romano, he's won here on this racetrack in the past. We saw a similar move from him on the first lap in Denver. You really wouldn't think somebody of his experience is going to make an elementary mistake like that. Maybe he just saw Tracy Camp on the inside was distracted but he hit the back. Uh, of Oriol Serbi there, and he was going a pretty fair yeah, bit. Yeah, Chris, Chris Channel's had a very frustrating season. I think, uh, you know, he's looking for a good, re was looking for a good re result today, but uh, a bit of frustration there, just an impatience, trying to get to the front early. Didn't pay off. On board with Paul Tracy, the race leader, 20 laps in the books this time around in his pit. pit time for Paul Tracy. His first pit stop, he pulls off, he's in the lead, he's led from uh, the, about the second corner and here he is now on pit lane and his crew will go to work and uh, Steve Moore a Kiwi driver he leads that crew in the pit stops on the right front tire four fresh Bridgestone Potenza tires a full 35 gallon a tank of methanol fuel and then PT will be underway great service got back off by that Forsyth racing team yeah a, gr a great pit stop and what a great first stint started fifth on the grid led the entire first stint in first place couldn't ask for more Sebastian Bourdais, however, did not pit that time around, so Bourdais is going to have one extra lap at speed, and that could be crucial. Well, that one extra lap on hot tires, that's worth a couple seconds right there, and that's about the gap he was down, so this is going to be really close on the way out. I'm 
sure Bourdais was uh, you know, just trying to conserve a little bit of fuel. This is exactly the way he wanted it to pan out. He can sit behind Tracy, sit in the slipstream, not use quite as much fuel. If he's in the slipstream, he doesn't have to push the air out of the way. And it's all those, those precious milliliters of fuel that, uh, that make the difference at the end of the day. And as you say, one more lap at speed, and that could pan out for Sebastian Bourdais. We'll have to see. But everybody now making their first round of pit stops, and here comes Sebastian. And he right now will have the uh, pedal to the metal. Oh, you, you can see he's like on a qualifying lap with Sebastian right now, and this is the best part of Champ Car. He's coming in right now. He's going to get service and probably come out just about the time Paul Trace is going to come down the front straight, and it is going to be close. Here he comes out onto pit lane. Though he's done that job there, get it down to the speed limit, 55 miles an hour on pit lane, and that was a, a, a thing that's bitten him a couple of times this year. But uh, now we're going to see whether the uh, car number one with uh, Todd Phillips leads the crew during the pit stops. Pedro Campizano is the chief mechanic, but he, uh, he uh, de declines to go over the wall these days, leave it to the younger guys. And again, look at that excellent service by uh, all four tires are changing absolutely record time, just waiting for the last dregs of fuel, and then the signal to go, and away goes Sebastian Bourdais. Again, excellent work by Newman House Racing. And a clear score around it by the looks of it. There is Paul Tracy, so as you can see, Sebastian Bourdais, he, he, it worked. he worked that yep. perfectly. It worked out perfectly, but Paul is now on hot tires and Sebastian's on cold tires. So that gap will shrink dramatically, but I think the time Paul gets up there, Sebastian will be fully up to speed. And there's a pro looks like a problem for Alex Tagliani. Clearly nothing going on there. They've, uh, they've changed the tires, they've put the fuel in. And, uh, I don't know what they were waiting for. Was a slow pit stop. Something went on there. Maybe they were just starting casual. the car at the back. We didn't cut quite see sort of behind the rear wing. The starter is, of course, on the, uh, the back end of these cars. And it certainly cost him uh, valuable seconds. And as you can see, there goes Nelson Philippe and Oriol Servia. And behind Servia now is Will Power. This has been a pretty exciting race this afternoon. There's uh, that's not been many uh, overtaken maneuvers for the lead, but all sorts of battles going on back down the pack. Oh, the, yeah, the midfield battle is great. Uh, unfortunately, I think the, the incident at the start when we had uh, Oriel and uh, Dominguez and, and uh, Damata, that, that sort of robbed us of some of the excitement. And, and uh, then, of course, with uh, Tracy having the engine uh, problem, we assume it was an engine. Um, I think that was Bordet's, you know, only challenger for the victory. Um, bad luck for Paul, but uh, taking nothing away from Sebastian, who's just really dominated this race. What you get, this is Justin Wilson now uh, shown in fifth place. So uh, Tagliani, with a fabulous charge back through the pack, able to get that final pit stop in, and he's rejoined in uh, fourth place. So it's Bordet, Olmending, uh, Vassa, Tagliani, and Wilson. We're launching uh, uh, Justin Wilson in fifth place, looking at another top five and. Uh, Again, a good season, as you were saying earlier, for the, uh, the lanky Briton. He's uh, six foot five inches tall. It's a real squeeze to get him into these cars, but uh, he's done a fabulous job all season long. A little bit of uh, cons consistency lacking, perhaps. Uh, not really consistency, but he, through the beginning of the, uh, the middle stage of the campa campaign, it really did look like Roosport had everything they needed to challenge Newman House Racing. But it has to be said, the last three or four races, they haven't been relatively quite as strong. Yeah, when they're on, they're on, uh, but they do have their off weekends, and I think that's just down to it's a new team, a lack of experience. They don't have that book that Newman Haas or Foresight have on uh, car setups and, and whatnot, and, uh, but next year they're just going to be stronger and, and, and uh, build on the momentum they built this year. And Justin Wilson, uh, we believe, is going to have to make one more pit stop. Yeah, here he is. He is in the pits right now, so he was another of the guys, like his teammate AJ Omening, playing for that late caution that would... Uh, negate the need for this final splash and go of fuel but that's not the case so Justin will give up that fifth place we'll have to wait and see how far he falls down the order but certainly he will now rue that incident he had when he was trying to teach a lesson that appeared to Marcus Marshall he tapped him on the far end of the racetrack had to make a pit stop shortly there afterwards and that uh, could have cost him uh, certainly cost him quite dearly because up until then he was on the same pit stop strategy as everybody else but coming in with 23 laps to go, he wasn't able to stretch that fuel load to the finish. So Wilson is uh, now into the pits as a leader. is on his final lap. Watching there, that is uh, Marcus Marshall, who's running in 11th place. One lap down to the leader, and here is the race leader. Just uh, one more lap to go. That is Andrew Ranger, ahead of the race leader. Ranger in 10th place. Uh, he will have been uh, praised that the leader is right behind him. But uh, Sebastian Bourdais... No rush at all, no need to overtake that slower class, what that's right. 
Yeah, unless Andrew waves him by or whatever, Sebastian's better to sit behind him and, and take the finish, but he's catching him pretty quickly. And Andrew's had, had a quiet day, but a solid 10th place finish, looks like for Andrew. And that's a good way to, he's had a rough couple of races and uh, this is a good one for him to finish. Yeah, good confidence builder to, uh, to get towards the end of the season. Just one race to go in Mexico City in two weeks time. But uh, he, this man is on cruise mode, but he's still driving uh, absolutely beautifully. Sebastian Bourdais hasn't put a wheel wrong this afternoon. He was beaten out of the first corner by Paul Tracy, but he was patient. He saved fuel. He went one lap further on the first pit stop than his rival, Paul Tracy. He came out in the lead and has not looked back. He set the fastest lap of the race by a considerable margin, and he's way out in front and cruising along now. He's just, uh, what, uh, three corners to go for Sebastian Bourdais. The blue flags are being waved for Andrew Ranger, but uh, I'm sure Sebastian will just, yeah, it looks like he's throttled right back there, coming into the corner. Listen to the, uh, the crowd, the crowd there, they're waving their appreciation and a sign of uh, acknowledgement from Sebastian Bourdais as he comes across the line. 57 laps uh, completely just uh, coasts uh, slowly across the line. An absolutely exemplary performance, and this Newman House Racing Team every right to be absolutely delighted. A perfect drive. That's what you would call that today no mistakes he didn't panic when Tracy got the lead and he did everything that was asked of him. And here's another guy who's done everything is asked of him this afternoon AJ Omnin would come home with the, the third second place finish of his young career in his second season of champ car racing he's finished uh, second in Milwaukee earlier this season also in uh, Cleveland and there's the obligatory celebratory donuts by Sebastian Bourdais and again just a brilliant job Sebastian, what a great day, and what a tremendous performance by this team. Things went like clockwork for you today. Yeah, it was, uh, I was really uh, annoyed by the start, really. It wasn't supposed to be like that. I was expecting Oil to uh, kick off a lot earlier than that. We, we had a plan to kick off early, and I don't know why, but the guys, I saw the guys behind closing on me, so I just, I just matched my speed with the Oil and got the jump, and I think I used the push to pass. He didn't. It was just a mess, and... Uh, when we got, got out of this uh, chicane, PT was in front, I couldn't believe it, and the uh, oil was nowhere to be seen, so it was just terrible for the team. So, in the end of the day, just uh, the result uh, swaps around, and that just uh, well deserved for this new Manas organization. So, there is the ecstasy of victory for Sebastian Bourdais, win number six on the season. It's been a, just a picture perfect day for Sebastian Bourdais and for Newman, Horse, Newman House Racing. For seven months, we've witnessed the spectacular, embraced the drama, and taken a ride at the speed of sound. No! Oh, trouble! He continues with the speed all day. Brian Hunter Ray, hard into the outside wall. Tracy wins his fourth here at Milwaukee. That's why we hired this guy. <laughs> Boom! He made a huge mistake. Tracy in command. Oh, he's blocking. Legends. And true legends never fade away.
tremendous atmosphere, uh, a lot of people on hand. You can see the, the red sidewall tyres from this onboard camera. So we have the softer tyres here from Bridgestone. We're getting ready for the start. The two Roosport cars who will lead us up to the green flag. And then we will go racing. The green flag is out and up they go through the gears. It'll be up to about, uh, well, from, a, from a rolling start, up to about 170 miles an hour. And uh, we're going to see a lot of action. We're on board here with the pulse of the Justin Wilson. They're alongside him with AJ Albany. Can we make it cleanly through the first corner? Catherine Lega, are we going to get through there cleanly? Yeah, I think we are. I think uh, the interesting coupling to watch will be the Paul Tracy and Sebastian Bourdais. And I think Paul's just got in front of Sebastian. So that will be an interesting one. It will indeed. I think we've made it through the first corner. That's the first time the chap cars have been back here now for four years. I'm Look pretty sure it's the first time we've made it through the first oh, corner. Oh, Paul's off. Paul Sebastian. Tracy. Yeah, Paul Tracy over a shot in turn three. And uh, yeah, definitely in the grass, that's going to be a problem for him. And uh, I saw Cristiano really aggressive in the beginning, you know, so Cristiano has a lot to prove, you know, he's been through, you know, a little bit of a tough time and criticism in the beginning, so I think that Paul, uh, you know, both Paul and Cristiano has a lot to prove this race. So Paul Tracy took a big shortcut through there, but uh, the uh, call from race control, I think it's a look, oh, I don't know, maybe there's damage to that car, he looks like he's not really up to speed, but Tracy had a big shortcut there, but he was able to uh, drop back in line there, he's fallen back behind Cristiano and Amada in fifth place. Uh, uh, and he looks like uh, we'll have to wait and see whether he can continue. But an excellent start by Justin Wilson in the Roosport car and his teammate AJ Ominger right behind him, Catherine. Yeah, absolutely. I think that AJ will probably just follow Justin for the... Oh, and there's a replay of Paul just going on the outside of Sebastian and Sebastian managed to take the corner and, and Paul had no choice but to take the escape route. It looks like he's got back on safely and it... Does it look like there's damage? Yeah, to maybe that car? there might be some damage to the right rear corner. I think we can see there he goes. Uh, yeah, he's locking up that uh, left front brake. Max Pappas. I think there might be a mechanical problem on that car. Uh, it's really easy to lock up the inside brake, you know, there, you know, the, the corner is a little bit uh, off camber. And look at Ario. Down the inside of Mario Dominguez. Kidding Tremendous me. move, you know. Ariel, you know, has been driving really, really good and has a lot to prove as well. You know, he's, a, he's one of those uh, aggressive guys that uh, really deserve a position there. So Paul Tracy in the pits at the end of the first lap and you can see they changed the tyres and sent him on his way. But what a disaster for Paul Tracy. There goes Paul Tracy. He's uh, just come in for a change of tyres and a fuel top-up. He is now back on the softer compound red sidewall tyres. Paul Tracy was involved in an accident, uh, well, within some sort of an incident on the very first uh, lap of the race. We didn't see the cause of it, but he picked up a puncture, had to come in and change the tyres. He went from the reds to, to the blacks. And when I talk about reds and blacks, I mean the sidewalls on these Bridgestone Potenza tyres. The reds are the softer, the alternate compound tyres, and the blacks are the harder regular compound tyres. Here we are, there. this is the battle for the lead. Justin Wilson, he's uh, been, uh, certainly his pace has uh, dropped off quite substantially uh, since the early said, well, by a good second or so per lap at least. Uh, and I was talking to a lot of drivers this morning. There's AJ Omni. Oh, oh, and Ronnie Brown's in the wall. A That's a big, big crash. Shot for Ronnie. Massive crash. That is going to bring out the full course caution. That and this is fabulous news for Paul Tracy because now if the caution comes out, which of course it will, the pits will be closed. So the leaders now are not going to be able to come in until the pits are opened. Paul Tracy, however, has just been into the pits. So when the pits are opened in a lap or two, once everybody has packed up behind a pace car, Paul is going to leapfrog all the way to the front of the field. It really has brought him back into the play in, in this race. You know, that's again, you know, that's uh, the beauty of American racing you know you're never out until the checker flag is out and uh, once again you know Paul you know has been those seconds when you push harder when you're in the car and you don't know why you're pushing you know they pay out in a situation like this you know hopefully you know Ronnie Bremen seems that he's uh, He's, he's taken the head collar off there, he's moving around, it's, he clearly he seems a, to be okay. The really big impact, I mean, you know, the, the Champ car are a very safe car, very big, you know, very, they protect the driver really well. Unfortunately, I had the experience to hit the wall a few, few times, uh, even on an oval, but looks like he walked out and... Uh, I think that was, was that, turn th th that was turn 13, I believe, the final corner of that S is, wasn't it? Yeah. I think so, and that's a real shame for him. He was up to 10th, he'd overtaken Timo Glock even, and he was having a really good race at the start. Then he dropped back, and, and now this. You have to really feel for him. He's done a super job, but Ronnie Bremer out for the day. 
So what a shame. Uh, Ronnie Bremer brings out the first full course caution of the afternoon. A huge crash at the exit of turn 13. We talked about it earlier on. A very tricky corner. It's very high speed. They're coming through that section of the track at well over 120 miles an hour. Look at that. Oh, the exit. He just he just lost the, the car and into the wall. That was a big impact as well. That's gonna, He's going to be sore tomorrow. And that's a great shame, not only for Ronnie Bremer. He was looking to finish in 10th place in the points. He held 10th position coming in here for Dale Coyne Racing. So we're still under caution. Here is Sebastian Bourdais once again onto pit lane. He's uh, had a lengthy pit stop first of all, and apparently all is not well with that McDonald's car. They're going to take the side pod off the uh, Lola there. They're going to work inside. We heard that they changed already the ECU, the electrical control unit on that car, and now they're going to go to work again. And uh, it, the good news, of course, is it is under caution, so relatively he's not going to lose m too much ground. But uh, we heard him complaining before the first round of pit stops that uh, the engine was losing power and as he was saying it he was setting the fastest laps of the race but clearly Max Papp is some kind of a problem here. Absolutely you know like uh, there is nobody better than the guys uh, the crew of Newman has you know those guys are you know super well trained you know they actually they practice these things you know in the pit stop uh, when they're back at home you know they practice changing tires they practice changing rear wing front wing possibly not the ECU but uh, you know there is definitely you know a quick check out there you know putting the side pod there and uh, back in the race but looks like maybe this time for Bordet it could definitely be a problem because uh, you're right in a stage that uh, you know if you lose track time it's really a problem to make it up with him. So there is another incident we see. That is uh, Sebastian Bourdais and Cristiano de Matter oh. who are battling over fifth place. They are both in the kitty litter. Oh, that's such a shame, Can Cristiano. you believe it? I know I'm kind of biased with the PKV thing, but it was been really nice for him to go out with a top five finish, and that's a real shame. It would be interesting to see the replay. And also, Sebastian was doing such a great job getting back through the field, so it's a shame for him to be out as well. I really don't envy those guys, having done most of the race, you know, eight laps to go. Who he, would want to be in there? He right just now. got past Jimmy Vassar, had Sebastian Bourdais after the restart, and now he, he, there he was t attacking, apparently, the other PKB car of Cristiano de Matter, and uh, uh, there is Bourdais out of his car. Here it is, here's a replay. Look at that, diving, uh, weaving around. Now that's Jimmy. That's Dominguez locking up. Jimmy's that's right PT, behind actually. him. That's PT, actually. That's PT all that's the way across tracing, the grass. Yeah. And uh, Lavine is a lap down. That's uh, that's on But okay, look at these two angle. behind him. There's, here we go. There's, uh, there's okay, Cristiano locks, locks him up. up. Sebastian oh, hit him. Yeah, I, know, I really don't think that's anybody's fault either, I well, think. Uh, to me, it's a bore day because uh, Dematter has already braked too late. He's locked him up and he still gets hit from behind by Sebastian Bourdais. He's now just uh, got about 10 corners to go to what will be a fabulously well-deserved second victory of his champ car career. His young teammate AJ hasn't won a race this season, could have, would have, should have won a few perhaps, but uh, second place still would be an excellent result. Yeah, very good thing to build on as well, Jeremy. You know, AJ's had his ups and downs these seasons. He's made a few mistakes. He's really struggled to get his head in the game. He's now got his head in the game, and to finish a solid second will be great. The Roosport guys downstairs, they're all going crazy. I, their stomachs are turning over and they want this race to be over I know uh, I'm feeling for them right now and of course we have the banquet tonight we celebrate the champion well done to Sebastian I mean fantastic job this year and these guys are going to be happy bunnies tonight aren't they they, they certainly are the two Roosport team teammates they are this year last year of course they battled for rookie of the year honors it was AJ that came on top he won the Ross Franz rookie of the year title one year ago over this man Justin Wilson now they are teammates and now just one corner to go for Justin Wilson and one more Word, I think dominance. He's going to do it. He's good job. Very, very good drive. There's radio communication as he takes the flag. And just sheer delight amongst the Roosport team. They've just done the perfect job. The one-two finish in third place. A, a brilliant drive by Paul Tracy. Absolutely amazing drive by him. But it's all about Roosport this afternoon. It's been a lot of fun this season. I hope you've enjoyed it. From Jeremy Shaw, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.